two teams. 24 came out here. We are down to our final two. And there are two things that are guaranteed. Triumph and heartbreak. They are ready and waiting to hear you. I'm going to say it one more time. Are we ready for our grand finals? <laughs> it is an all Brazilian beast of a best of five. And our two teams are ready to roll. It's been five long years since they last lifted a big one. With big dreams and a legend ready to fulfill his destiny. It's Team Liquid! Just two months ago, they missed out on a world championship. This time, they refuse to settle for second. It's W7M! <laughs> Palu, good to see you again. Philippe Ox, thank you for joining us here in the center of the stage and taking time because I know what this moment means to you and both of your individual rosters. Palu, we've said it so many times. You know what it feels like to stand here moments away from a grand final, meters away from a major trophy. Why is this your time? There's not much I can say. I already said it in the other interviews, like we're the best and we're gonna beat anyone. It doesn't matter who. Philippe Ox, you've been part of this roster for a matter of months. Your teammates were part of that heartbreaking loss at SI just a matter of months ago as well. What does it mean to you as an individual be, to be surrounded by that pressure to not let that loss happen again? Uh, I don't think there's pressure. Uh, it's my first finals. I think the, the pressure is totally on them. So we're just going to play our, our game and that's it. Palu. What has the last 24 hours been like for you? Every time I say your name, let me try that again. Palu. What has the last 24 hours been like for you in your camp on a mental level? Uh, I want to say, like, we are doing the same things we did for the other teams. Like, of course, it's a BO5, so there's a lot of study involved. So that's basically most of the things that we were doing, like because there's so many maps, you can do everything before the match. So we were preparing and talking about everything. So it will take a long time for it. And that's it, basically. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of that mental preparation, this is, of course, now a best of five. Are your teams mentally prepared for that? Yeah, I think so. We prepare for the maps uh, and we are mentally prepared for that. All right, listen, this is, of course, an all-Brazil grand final. Your fans are watching at home in their thousands. Is there anything you want to say to them in Portuguese before we get into this? Bom, independente quem vencer aí, sem dúvidas, o Brasil não saiu ganhando, né? E, pô, espero que todos torçam aí, porque seja uma boa partida. Felipe Ox. Obrigado a todo mundo que está torcendo aí para gente. Como o Paulo disse, vai ser um jogão aí, o título já está para o Brasil. E é isso, espero que seja uma grande partida. And finally, Anything you'd like to say to each other, starting with you? Ah, vamos ver né, no server aí, man. <laughs> bom jogo. Na, na, só bom jogo. Okay, I'm hoping they said, I'm going to whoop you in the server. Guys, go and take a seat. Best of luck to both of you. It doesn't get any more epic than this. To preview your Blast R6 Copenhagen Major Grand Final, it is over to Milos and the gang on the desk. Take it away, you handsome man. Thank you very much, Ian. Let's go, we're back, and it's Grand Finals time! A best of five series for the ages. W7M, the new kids on the block, versing Team Liquid. It has been 1,813 days <laughs> since Nesk and Palu won their trophy in Atlantic City, New Jersey in 2018, a Pro League Season 7 
finals. And today they're playing for the trophy, but also some cash on the side. $200,000 for the winning team, a $120,000 difference between first and second place. Not too shabby coming into the grand final with 80K, and Liquid has had a few of those. W7M has been halted at the semis over the past year, Jack. Yes, they have. I think, you know, coming back to Liquid, we, we're going to go in with that always the bridesmaid, never the bride kind of storyline, which is we've seen them in finals and losing them. We've seen them in semi-finals and losing them. They're always a tournament favorite, but they never just about get over the line. They've got massive opportunity today, though. Yeah, I mean, you can't count out either of these teams when you come to second place. Both are very familiar with it. Three months ago, W7M falling at the sixth invitational to G2. You go back six months and Yongshiping, the exact same story for Team Liquid falling to BDS. Both of these teams know what it's like to lose on a stage of this scale today. Unfortunately, one of them has to repeat, but another will be able to break that curse. Let's take a look at that bracket very quickly for those who are just joining us for the grand final. Hello, we hope you're doing well. It's a perfect time for you to join us. We'd love to have you throughout the entire tournament, but then again, there's never too late. Team Liquid versus W7M, of course, in our grand final. Liquid having gone through Face Clan and before that G2, the reigning world champions before W7M knocking out M&M, the two teams that eliminated EU squads. Wow, what a surprise. <laughs> now, they went up against Sonics yesterday, rolled them over to get us to that grand final final. Are we surprised in seeing these two squads here in the final, Jack? Not necessarily. I think Liquid have looked, especially with that addition of Vault, who, you know, we'll talk about was on W7M. They've looked incredible, you know, throughout Brazil League and also throughout this tournament. I think for W7M, there was a lot of people that weren't necessarily that excited about them, given the roster changes before the tournament started. But as soon as the tournament started, it became apparent these guys are here to win it as well. 100%. I mean, you talk about these guys coming in for the roster. I think Fellipox proved just yesterday what he is capable of. Absolutely crushed it towards the end of their final match against the Sonics in the semifinals. Fellipox, massive clutches, massive flanks coming through. We had him on the interview and he said it uh, big better than any of us. It was the best game he's played all tournament long. So Fellipox, an incredibly important player coming in for W7M. Nobody is doubting these guys any longer. But let's be fair. Liquid still beat the reigning world champions. They made G2, who are rolling over everybody, look like chumps. Yeah, they've had such a difficult bracket so far. Team Liquid have crushed everybody they've gone up against. G2 in the first round, FaZe Clan, the number one seed from Brazil in the second round. They have not had an easy time here. Undoubtedly, Team Liquid have looked like an incredibly strong team against incredibly strong opponents. W7M, I mean, they were one or two round losses away from being eliminated by Nello in the quarterfinals. It's a different path in this case, Jack. I mean, you, they didn't get to play many games also in Phase 2 W7M. They got to Phase 3, and th it was really a tough road to get here to the final. Yeah, I think so. I think even if you look all the way back at the M&M game, where you could actually argue Eminem should have beaten W7M. Exactly. But they managed to find a way through, and I think that's one of the things is that they know how to do it the hard way. They had, it was very similar to Star of Six Invitational, where they were going up against a lot of big teams that they had to beat. They managed to come through. They got the upper bracket in the Six Invitational, but obviously they fell short of them. There's only so many times where you can say, hey, now you're in the final, when are you going to take it? We yeah. had this conversation about BDS and Yunshirping, and we're saying, hey, they have never won the trophy. It's happened before for Liquid. It's never happened for W7M. That was the time where we got the crown with BDS. And of course, Liquid were on the other side thinking, mm -hmm. oh, so close yet so far. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of talk about players who have never won a trophy before. Can we talk about the guy who has? Nest, five years ago with Team Liquid in Atlantic City. A massive tournament for him. He was inhuman back in the day. He was the MVP of that tournament when they won. He was ridiculous. 1.84 KD ratio, 1.27 kills per round. Last time they won that tournament, he was fantastic yesterday in the semis as well. You've got to think he's looking to repeat history today. We've seen them now on the stage. They're getting ready for their matchup. Let's set them up though against one another. It is W7M v Team Liquid. Bom, estar na grande final acho que é muito importante, ainda mais para o nosso conjunto, então só tenho poucas palavras a dizer e dessa vez não passa, agora a gente ganha. Ah, dizer que a Liquid sempre é um jogo difícil, a gente sabe disso, a gente se conhece muito bem, ano passado a gente jogou muitos jogos contra, só que vai ser um jogo difícil, mas a gente vai sair com a, com a vitória. Cara, eu acho que porque a gente vai ganhar esse meio, eu acho que é o nosso conjunto. Eu acho que a gente tem cinco peças muito importantes dentro do nosso time. São cinco jogadores muito habilidosos. Então eu acredito que 
que a gente tem pra fazer, a gente vai fazer. I think the game against Liquid is going to be a pretty good one. Uh, because uh, we won against them face two, so they're, they're coming uh, for revenge. And there they are. Both of our teams are now on the stage, but we have to talk about top performers and highlights, VIPs really, in the world of Siege. Let's start with Nesk on Team Liquid, Jesse. Yeah, we were just hyping him up and how well he did five years ago in Atlantic City, MVP of that tournament. You know he has been showing up again. He's the old man of the squad, right? Yeah. But you wouldn't know it from his play. His reaction time still so fast. The long angle fights, his eyesight, it's fantastic as he comes through the server finding so many frags. You know, we saw him doing so well yesterday against uh, FaZe Clan on board or the way he ended up that map. He really has been the heart and soul of this team, pushing them forward, bringing that experience, but also lifting up the, uh, the young players. You know, Volps has uh, been just as good right alongside him. These two duo, uh, players as a duo have just been fantastic for Liquid. They look like a complete team as well. You know, we can talk about individual players and how well Ness has done, but I think Lagonis has now got a front line that he's very comfortable at gelling around the park. It's got the experience, it's got those pop-off players, and like I say, they look like a complete team. And Nesk is incredibly dedicated to Team Liquid, not just to the craft of competing in Siege, but to Team Liquid especially. He's been on there since day one, their introduction. He even missed a massive date to be able to fly out to the Paris Major and play under the banner of Team Liquid for the first time ever at the time there. This is the first Major we've ever had. Of course, he had played in the Pro League. It's the birth of his daughter to be there to play and compete. It's a massive, massive commendation to him to be so focused on the game. But on W7M, no slouches at all. KZ is an absolute maniac of the server. And we've got another birthday boy in the final. Hey. KZ, it's Are we singing it again? Years old today. I'm down if we want to. All right, all together. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, KZ. Happy birthday, KZ. Happy birthday, dear KZ. Happy birthday to you. 21 years old today, the entry fragger for W7M, and what an incredible player he is. 101 kills for the tournament so far, 78 deaths, 39% entry participation. One of the scariest roamers in the entire world right now. If he's out there lurking across the map, you won't know it, and when he shoots you in the back of the head, it is terrifying. Coursing on the attack as well, fantastic entrying in, being that first spearhead for the attack. I think he's the best player on W7M. He's shown that time and time again, and you know he's hungry for a birthday trophy. I think one difference between W7M and Liquid is how W7M try to enable one player rather than Liquid trying to enable the all-round team, right? And I think particularly KZ, but also Herds as well, they put a lot of utility and investment into their positioning, into the drones in front of them, and also on the defense, the utility that they've got around them so that they can have these big pop-off moments. If you look at the kind of kills, deaths, and all, all that good stuff, the stats are very much top-heavy from the side of W7M, whereas Liquid is a bit more equal across the board. Liquid was like that in their earlier days when they relied so much on Nesk's theme. Seems like things have really changed with Lagonis on the squad, but to be called the best player in W7M, that is a massive accolade on its own. Oh, yeah. At some point, you got to falter under the stress, right? Maybe not. Like, they just look unflappable. That's the thing is, like, you know, some of these guys internationally, they, they, they're still quite recent internationally. We talk about, you know, Pyro Luna, they've been there forever. You know, KZ's relatively new onto the scene, but he looks unflappable. He's now played in semifinals. He's played in finals. He's in another one, two consecutive finals, by the way, for the side of W7M. So. I don't think he'll falter at all. I think he'll just keep getting better and better and better. And in three years time, you know, it could get to the point of talking about him as one of the best players to have ever played the game. Yeah, I mean, you've got two genuine uh, arguments for the GOAT of all, uh, greatest of all time from Brazil. You've got Paulo on one side, you've got KZ on the other. I think Paulo with his legacy certainly has maybe a bit more of an argument, but I mean, this stage, this will define that. I mean, if we see KZ come out, drop a 20 ball on map one and take down Team Liquid, yeah, I mean, you're definitely going to be talking that, uh, talking about that. We got championship material on this stage, that's for sure. Now, our maps for this series, don't mind everybody, it is a best of five much longer series, and we saw W7M at Invitational. It's something that really exhausts you. Liquid, it's been a while since they've had a series this long, and here it is, W7M on the attack. They start on Skyscraper, Bank second for Liquid on the attack. Chalet afterwards, all gave it an attacking side. W7M and finally Theme Park for Team Liquid, and we'll have a classic one to close it all off. It'll be Clubhouse for Team Liquid starting off 
on the defense. Overall thoughts on our map pool. <laughs> a lot of curveballs here, Milo. There's a lot of surprises coming through. Liquid have been throwing curveballs all tournament long, and they certainly have not stopped here. I want to skip past Skyscraper for a moment and go to Bank. This is the map that these two played when they met in the stage so far, and it was a win for W7M. Liquid coming out and first picking this map is a huge shock. Well, let's just rewind to Skyscraper. When they played each other in Brazil finals, Liquid 7-0 W7M on the map, oh and W7M have picked into it today, <laughs> known as their permaban. Like, I wrote for Skyscraper, like, it's a low preference, they're likely to ban it out, and they've gone gung-ho, they've picked it. Yeah, and then Chalet, after that, picked by W7M. Team Liquid, four-game win streak on the map. It's so good for them. So, really, really interesting map band pool here. All right, Skyscraper, who takes the lead? Who do you think? Oh, you've got to back Liquid. You've got to back Liquid, even though it's W7M's pick. They've got recent history of 7-0-ing the team they've picked up into it. Jesse? I agree with Jack. I think Team Liquid, I mean, they're the better team coming into this tournament. They're good on this map. I got to go for them. Copenhagen, W7M! Team Liquid? Yeah, I think the crowd's spoken, but we'll have to see how things turn out in the server. Thanks so much, Jesse and Fresh. Copenhagen, are you ready? Let's kick it off to our caster. Best of five. All yours. Enjoy as an ace. Thank you very much, Milos. What a best of five we've got on our hands here. I know many look at it and go, Tim, two Latin teams in the EU region, but you can't ignore the plot armor these two teams have got. What a story we've got building up. Well, the thing is, it's kind of similar on both sides, isn't it? You mm. know, we've got these two teams that have been really dominant, that have had great performances in international tournaments, but just never hit that final mark. And one of them today, 100% guaranteed, will take a major title home. There's some really exciting stats around this game as well. You look at the recent scores that we've seen for the two teams, W7M, top four appearances. They've had three in the last year alone. You look at Liquid, it's been five over the last few years as well. There's just, again, at some point, one of these streaks has to be broken. A team has to take the win. And truthfully, I think I'm with the analysts as well. Given how the first two maps look in this map ban, you'd give it to the side of Liquid. But we know the best of fives can surprise us, Tim. They always do. Don't they just? And this is going to be nothing short of an absolute classic. I can feel it at this point, mm. as you say. Two teams that have got so much experience playing against each other. 7-5 when they played earlier in the tournament. So nothing really to separate them in regulation. It was won by the slimmest of margins by W7M. And we're going to be heading straight into a map that is, is not a known favourite for W7M, really, Des, into Skyscraper. Mm. I mean, Skype for me, at least. Favourite map. I love, love it. Love Absolutely. Cast in this it. map at the moment, so big fan for us to head there and see how things are going to break down there. And then before we head into bank, still, I think I was looking at the stats, same as Fresh was. You look again for, I know they've already talked about this, but looking at the side of the stats, things coming out for W7M, Skyscraper is their second lowest pref map. But if you look at Liquid and their win rate on it, it's actually pretty low. So there's a very fair chance here that W7M have gone, yep, you know what, we've held that map for the longest time. It hasn't been our best, but we feel we're ready and we think we spotted a weakness in the Liquid armor. That is what they're riding on in this series. Bans coming through pretty quick for these first two attacker bans. The KB, truthfully, we've seen not just Latam, but truthfully, a lot of teams here at the whole competition have lent in towards the KB a lot on the attacking side to really help clear through things quicker, to retain more control. So only having the Lion inside to make use in a similar kind of capacity could sting both attacking teams here. The Thermite Hard Breach ban looking more towards Geisha Wall and the next two, I'd argue, relatively staple, although Thatcher was still open despite the Kai being banned away. Yeah, I think uh, Therma is the one that draws your attention oh, really yeah. in that uh, in that banning phase. There are other hard breach options, of course. You're going to other hard breaches Ace. are available. Other hard breaches are available. <laughs> as you are absolutely correct. You're going to be bringing Ace along. You're going to be bringing Hibana instead. Um, like you say, that hard breaching it is an essential tool to have here on Skyscraper. So it is at least going to disrupt things a little bit. Um, but you are likely to still get the job done. Well, here we go, map number one. Round number one is underway in this best of five, and I hope it turns out to be an exhilarating one from start through to finish. Now, on the defensive side, to kick things off is Liquid. With how things are currently going, you're looking towards quite a bit of denial, looking towards the Mute, the Bandit, the Mirror here as well, really looking to retain a lot of map control and make it difficult for W7M to get inside key locations. And when you look towards the Azami pick that Palu's currently sat on, you are going to see her in pretty much every 
every single round of this map, I imagine, because she's so oppressive at creating these Kiba barriers, in case you haven't seen them. Big round, circular things that you can drop anywhere around the map, and they create like temporary barriers that need to be destroyed at range, not by bullets, but by things like nades, gone sixes, hard breaches, breaching rounds coming out from herds on the ad. Just a real good way of making sites very dynamic to defend. W7M then making their way towards the building, certainly not wanting to rush anything, not wanting to give away those early picks, that early advantage that can be found. We've got the Maverick on side from Philippox, going to help with those hard breaching duties. Nade bringing the ace as well, so plenty of options there available for W7M. We can hear them actually getting straight to work, mm. opening up that reception wall. That's just going to make it a little bit more tricky for Lagonis to play in that area. Was there on the bandit, so you wonder if there was going to be an attempt to sort of play the bandit trick onto the wall, yeah. but it was unsuccessful. Successful. They get that opened. It's usually reasonably easily dealt with. You sat on a soft surface, so you've got to be cautious of what's going on underneath as well. It's not the kind of thing you'd see on Clubhouse when trying to open up the CC wall, right? When you have a bandit trick trying to sit there, you'll just chuck nades skywards from below and force that player away from being able to trick. It's a very similar thing here. Though, really looking at this and asking, okay, then maybe you look towards that Thatcher being along in future rounds. The problem with the Thatcher being that the EMP can't stop the bandit actually getting to the wall and trying to trick in time. So it does mean that with those nades on side, the bandit is hard forced away, not just softly dissuaded from making use of the bandit batteries. All this from Ness playing it very aggressive here. Knows that he's likely to be pushed from that side, but he's certainly not going to drop back out of drum for the time being. Resets is actually supporting him from up inside of Dragon as well. So really trying to draw a line across the middle of the map here, Liquid, and say, you know, you're not going anywhere beyond this point for as long as we can help it. KZ is going to be the one to push in. Will he find his man in resets? It's the Oryx inside of Dragon, and he he needs to be taken down, oh, and there what? you go, KZ doesn't just find one Des, he finds both, he's going to take down Nesk and resets, completely gain map control for W7M all the way up to site pretty much now, and that's Team Liquid on the back foot in round one. We love a pocket mirror as well coming out just to try and make things a little bit more problematic for KZ, and he is put on his backside by Volts. Former teammates clashing, not forgetting the Volts moved over to the side not all that long ago. JV puts him in the ground. W7M up to a three versus one here as Lagonis, all that's left standing for Leapox sees to that. Round one goes to W7M. Very solid from W7M. I've got to ask questions there of Resets and Nesk playing across the middle of the map like that. Not sure they had enough utility there to support them. KZ able to just walk in, take those gunfights, but take them one at a time. And that's something that Resets and Nesk have got to do well in that position is play off each other's contact. They can't allow KZ to have them one at a time like that because he's going to win your gunfights. And that is the problem that they faced. Five versus three very quickly after that little sort of mid-round battle and also lost a lot of ground. There you go. You just yeah. saw the time in there. It was just a second off, and it allowed KZ to get them both. It was the confidence of it as well. Like, he knew he was being challenged from Shrine slash Dragon. He knew there was a player hanging on that corner. So to push around blind and look towards you right there, you've really got to be quick in winning that first engagement. But for me, that was sort of the pivotal point of that round, for him to find two kills and force Liquid to have to rotate players around to play on Dragon, for example, where we saw Bolt step across. Just a really good commanding force in the side of that round. Here we go then, we're round two. Going to change things up at least a little bit. A little bit more out on the roam, I feel, for the side of Liquid. You're seeing the Jaeger of Ness coming in. We've got the Solus on side. You've got resets once again on the Azami. Well, it was Paul in the previous round, but the Azami's still on the team. Just feel to me they want to get a little bit busier around the map, Tim. Yeah, absolutely that. Um, they sort of set the stalls out in the last round. It didn't really pay off for them, as we saw with KZ walking in and getting those kills. So maybe let's burn a little bit of time elsewhere. Moving across to Karaoke T. Uh, you can see immediately the presence is there over in office in exhibition. Herds is going to be the one to come up against that potentially. Herds has had a fantastic tournament so far, we've got to say that. Um, certainly been putting up the numbers for W7M. And there's one just on the other side of the wall. It could be another number for him mm. to collect. If only he knew. That's exactly why you've got Ness dancing around. We've seen quite a few teams make use of this mirror window, by the way, to be able to stop the double exhibition wall being opened up. So your entry becomes a little bit awkward. It's a single doorway into Terrace, or you're bolting in through the display window. This window right here is your entry in towards this side of the map, and it's just really uncomfortable. So it doesn't look like much one reinforcement in the mirror window, but it can work absolute wonders. And Herds has a good read, but Nesk is just better. Had an absolute screamer of a series yesterday. It doesn't look like he's slowing down here either. 
great opener from Ness there. I think Herds maybe wasn't quite expecting the man just on the inside of the wall. His reactions were just a little bit delayed and Ness taking full advantage of that. Needs to be careful though, takes his eye ah. off the prize. And JV92 manages to step in with what is a very late trade there, levelling things up four versus four. But this round certainly going better oh. than the last. Volps hitting another one of those beautiful long shots that we've seen from him throughout the tournament. What I love really is that Nesk has wasted half the round though. One for one so far, obviously, but when he got the opening kill, again with minimal involvement and commitment from Utility, that's just burning so much time off the clock for W7M, leaving them to have to force a few fights. And for Lee Box's sure force in here, like a force themselves, they've charged on through. Two kills on Lagonis once again. He's in a one versus three this time round. He doesn't miss the shot. Still two more to find. These two teams in Philippe Ox and Lagonis have got two of the most clutch players at the event so far. And we see one of them left again, but cut down by the other. It's going to be for Leapox to find that final kill onto Lagonis. Diffuser was going down at the same time. And W7M, they close out what has been a very good two rounds for them so far. 2-0. You raised a really good stat there as well. Both Philippox and Lagonis had the most clutches at the tournament. Five, I think it is, they have to their name. Sitting largely on match. In fact, I think Nello also has five, but then Eminem have played like 18 maps. Whereas these two, these two teams have played 10 and 12, respectively. When you look at the numbers, it sort of looks like Eminem played in every game. It does. <laughs> I mean, it was crazy. We were sat talking to them when they got knocked out the other day, and they were just like, you know, we've played like 18 games or something. And I was like, that's insane. Yet yeah, you've been knocked out. But that's because they've played so many on their way on their run through, which is pretty crazy. That's what happens when you have to fight your way through the elimination side of phase two. Constant best of threes from start through to finish. Kitchen Barbecue will be our third round here between Team Liquid and W7M. Then in our major Copenhagen Grand Final. Well underway, and W7M certainly got themselves rolling quicker than Liquid. I think the Liquid fans, many of which we've got here in Copenhagen, are going to be looking for them to wake up sooner rather than later. You don't want them losing too many defences here on Skyscraper. They'll be looking to maybe bring this back to an even half so that they can take that attack side and try and get themselves the first map over the line. Absolutely. Well, so far, it's been pretty composed from W7M. You know, Liquid, as we've commented in both rounds, have been very aggressive in their holes, you know, extending out towards the other side of the map, looking to challenge them at every entry in towards Geisha back in round one, just trying to really slow W7M down, but they sort of go slow to begin with to face off against that aggression out of Liquid. Once they get an entry kill or two and start to open things up, they really start moving quickly. So look for that in this round here as well. They should go pretty slow around Volts to try and control him and find a kill or two before stepping their way in towards site. But it's that later stage of the round where you'll see them go very fast. Volts just looking to maybe aggress onto that push and try and get another kill as he did early in the last round. But it's actually going to be Paul who manages to pick up KZ. The ring around the roses ends with Herds taking down Volts, leveling things out. Four versus four. And once again, how well have W7M done this so far? There's, they go a man down and then they just kill after kill after kill in return until they stand in the advantage. Another one comes in there onto Paul in a late trade. And that's going to be advantage W7M again in round three here. They are four versus three, but cut down by Lagonis inside of sight there, managing to just bring things all square. Getting involved a little bit earlier this time around as well. He's sick of being in these 1v3s that have really stung him. An interesting pick to play as well, knowing that he's normally a more supportive player on the vigil, looking more to deny the information away without bringing on the mute itself that we've seen Nescon in the prior couple of rounds. So always trying out these new ideas and seeing how they can upset W7M's attacks. It's just going to be opening up barricades, offering himself options should they be needed later on. And just looking to pressure in through storage at the minute directly in towards site, potentially. The angle is not being watched at the minute. They're not aware of Herds pushing forwards. He continues to crouch walk in here, knowing that there could be an opportunity for him to just sneak inside a site and have one of those moments where you find yourself a couple of kills. If he looks hard right, I think they're just on the far side of the wall, so mm. it's not going to be an easy kill for him, but he can certainly start taking some serious control. But here they're getting ready for it, the charge in as well. Do they have any idea at this point? No, but surely they hear it going down. And someone needs to react, whether it's to poke off on the flank or whatever it might be. They're going to let him get away with this one. Just enough pressure being shown upstairs in Geisha that they can't play on the hatch, and there's no way of stopping it. Now it's on Team Liquid to be the ones to be proactive and to take action. Nesk 
pushing upstairs. This oak kill on upstairs is going to be the most important part. If Ness loses out here, they're done for. In fact, they sent all three players upstairs, Tim. They want him dead. They certainly do. 20 seconds left to get this done for Team Liquid if they want enough time to disable that activated diffuser. Look at this from Felipox. The patience, he knows it's coming. He's waiting, but no, they all crash down upon him at once. And that leaves us now in effectively a two versus two, but Reset gets brought up back onto his feet. Easy. Oh, one, two, three. Dares. They fall like dominoes as W7M don't just take three kills. They take three rounds now. 3-0. <laughs> That feels like a pretty safe bet to make, my friend. It does feel like Brazil is going to win one way or the other. Re quick rehost coming in here as well, but just as I mentioned, I feel so far that Liquid are a little bit asleep at the wheel. It's not to say that they're the ones who are determining the pace of the game. I feel a lot of that is coming down to W7M. They're dealing with the roam coming out pretty well, coming from Team Liquid. Then they're really starting to think about their execute and playing it quite safely and sensibly, not looking to go too crazy, chaotic, aggressive, just step-by-step -step siege that right now they're playing quite comfortably in Liquid, not really showing any bite back. No, I think that's the problem at the minute. We, you know, we know that Liquid are a team that through the years, not just in its current iteration, but through the years has been very capable of coming back into games. You, you and I cast them in the SI Grand Final days. They were effectively, it was a one-map advantage to NIP. NIP took the first played map and they were 2-0 down, but they brought it all the way so that we saw them into map five. We know that nothing is really lost for this team, but for me, Des, they're just a little bit quiet today. They need a couple of those moments. You know, we've all seen Ness going absolutely crazy throughout this tournament, screaming, you know, hyping his team up, and it's not something that we've necessarily seen consistently from him over the years. You know, quite often it can be quite a serious affair, all about business when he's sat in that seat, but mm. we've seen him really sort of, you know, forcing energy into the team, but that's not something that's, that's coming out just yet. Yeah. And I like how we've gone from that quick technical timeout straight into a Team Liquid tactical timeout. If you want to be familiar with the differences, technical, you're not allowed to talk. That is a tech issue. It shouldn't therefore have an impact on the, on the state of the game. You shouldn't be able to discuss and amend things that are going wrong. Tactical, you can, and your coach can also get involved. You have 45 seconds on which to address the issues that you've seen. And generally, I'm a big fan of the post round three timeout. If you're down turn one, down three and zero, that feels like the best time to step in and go, right, we've seen one of each site so far. What has been the common problems? How can we amend this before we go back through those same three sites again in the second quarter? And it seems here that Liquid, they know that there's something going very, very wrong when they're barely getting on the board, Tim. Yep, hug sword there, coach. Plenty to say during that tactical timeout. A former player himself, uh, you know, so mm. more than more than aware of what it feels like to sit in these positions, in these games, um, and obviously has seen something that he thinks can maybe be improved for Liquid. For me, I think they just need to take the fight to W7M a little bit more. It is about winning some gunfights, which, you know, it's easy to say. You've just got to win a few more gunfights. When you're against Herds, just win gunfights, KZ. Yeah. Just win gunfights, gunfights against easy. Herds, KZ, Philippe Ox. Just, just go and win the gunfights. It's shouldn't be a problem. But yeah, I think Team Liquid just need to take the initiative a little bit more here. Um, you know, get themselves those advantages and work from them because Team Liquid are a team that are great when they're in the lead. They are really good at staying on top of people. So they just need to actually get themselves that position and lock it down. A small concern on that is that back in round one, we had two people holding around drum and trying to contest. Then you step into round two where Nask is all by himself out towards exhibition and office. The only way to really go after those two things haven't worked is to commit three, four, players out towards the roam, which just exposes your backline and means site can be left completely empty. But it does look like for Liquid, there's going to be at least two players holding out here once again. Maybe doubling down on what happened before isn't a bad idea. There is no mirror on side to help with the exhibition hold, mind you. But there is definitely leaning in towards more of the drone denial with both the Mew and the Mozzie on side this time round. Heard straight away into the building, no messing about. And this could be a problem for Team Liquid. W7M just growing in confidence. Uh, you know, they were very cautious first couple of rounds, paying a lot of attention to the peaks, paying a lot of attention to any early aggression. Now it's them that are bringing the aggression. Herds is getting himself into a tricky position. He's looking to be able to push onto Black Stairs. If they start dumping a little bit of utility in there to support him, maybe force that Liquid player to move around, it could be an absolute freebie for Herds. And if that happens, it's a really dangerous position to lose to Liquid. It gives control of Black stairs over to W7M, and they can start really working towards, uh, you know, a, a plant in a reasonable amount of time. This might be a read coming out here as well to say, forget about exhibition office. We know they're committing more players out, and you can see three or four outlines out towards that east side of the map. Up so for Liquid, the answer was more players out on the Roman. Hope to God they come and greet us there, but 
The V7 M is saying, yeah, nah, forget about that. We're going direct towards site here. Gage is going to be their entry point they're looking for. And by the looks of it, a couple of Liquid players have slowly drawn their way back over towards this west side of the top floor. Herds maybe just waiting for a little bit of information underneath. Uh, if he sees that yellow ping come out, he's going to have the nade ready. And that's exactly why he's held his position at the minute. Needs to be cautious on those drum stairs. There are goo mines out there. JV92 managing to pick up bulbs to kick things off. Ness with a trade. But Herds, he looks alive and manages to find one KZ taken down by Lagonis, leaving us in a swift 3v3. Oh, 3v2 with Felipe X on his backside here. I don't know if they'll have time to get him back up again or not. He is sat in the corner of Geisha, so it's a bit of a, a no-man's land. You can't just sit inside there freely unless you get challenged. You've got resets playing on main stairs, looking to help, and Nader stepped in, found one back the other side. So suddenly, actually, it's this two versus two, and it's a complete clean-out. Lagonis gets the closing kill with the final man finished off by a frost map. That utility just come into Liquid's assistance there. Exactly what they needed and not a moment too soon, I would say. Getting themselves round four just brings them back into it before it starts feeling like a huge mountain to climb. There is still the possibility of an evenly split first half. It's going to take some work, but Liquid, they at least start a step in the right direction. Absolutely. Felt like for a second that uh, W7M had done enough to be able to fight this one back, but you saw that gunfight just being whiffed at the very end. And that was the only invitation that Liquid really needed to keep things bouncing back. Exhibition and Office going to be our site for round five. This is really where we've got to see Liquid win two on the bounce, I think, Tim. If you're coming out of the half a 3-3 scoreline on Skyscraper, you're not feeling too chuffed about that. Again, when you look back at those stat lines that we spoke about previously, really, the Liquid, you're bouncing them to take the first two maps, but W7M are saying, nah we are able to play Skyscraper. 100%. Um, W7M have been a team I, I'm going to say full of surprises coming into this tournament, and, and I'll clarify that because we've known for the, you know, since they made their first major back in May last year in Charlotte, we've known that this is a team that could well be destined for glory. Very, very good team. But I think, you know, a lot of opinions and attitudes towards W7M coming into this tournament was they've had those roster changes. They're going to need a little bit of time. We're maybe not going to see them sort of pick up where they left off after SI. We're maybe not going to see that same sort of run. I think after the first game or two of seeing this team work together, those opinions were completely reversed. And Absolutely. people were like, hang on a minute. These changes have made W7M even more formidable. They've made them even better. And they are just rolling with them immediately. And that's just clearly continuing here against Liquid. They're really starting to stun them at the minute. Stunning is probably the right way to describe it. And hopefully there's a little bit of a wake up coming in the next few rounds. Start things off once again, the W7M, I've said it several times over, they tend to really play meticulously at the start of these games. And the funny thing is, Tim, I look back, say, two, well, start of these rounds, sorry. Look back even two years ago, and Latam was regarded as the, the wild child region where people would just go absolutely bonkers. It was all about frags. There was some strategy in there somewhere. These days, it's a bit different, and Herz is straight up inside of sight. Sees one for himself and wins it out, but can he spin on to a second? It's two quick and early kills, and they're looking for a third. Felipot's going nuclear this map at seven and two. Diffuser's going down. It's 5v2, and Liquid have been caught with their pants down, Tim. 100%. It's going to be a flawless round finished off there. I don't think the Diffuser even had time to finish being planted there before they'd got those final kills. This is looking worrying from a perspective of any of the Liquid fans watching this game because Bank, as Jesse said on the desk, has already been won at this tournament by W7M between these two teams. It was 7-5, it was a close game, but W7M are going to feel good about potentially being able to take that map off Liquid. They've come out here, they've won a map that we might not have expected them to play in, Skyscraper, and they're just showing at the minute, for me at least, as they're a cut above. That's the problem. And at this point, I know momentum's really running away with W7M, and I'm always the biggest proponent of there are two halves to a game of Siege. Things can completely change when Liquid get on the attack. Maybe they're just not comfortable defending the map particularly. But this one does feel like it's got that momentum where all the gunfights are being won by W7M. You know, Herds is sat at 6-2. and two. You've got Felipox at 8-2. and two. And on the other side, and you're looking towards Lagonis as the one who's really shining. Resets, Volps, Palu, none of them really getting involved in the game just yet. And you look back to the destruction effort put on by Volps and Nesk yesterday in their semi-final. That hasn't come online yet. And if you're going to beat a team like W7M, you so sorely need it. Yeah, that's absolutely it. It's certainly, you know, not to be critical of, of um, you know, anything that Lagonis normally does. But if he's your leading man in terms of frags, 
you've got a problem after five rounds, um, you know, realistically, because he's, he's going to be playing the anchor role, he's going to be playing inside a site. It means a lot of your kills are probably coming towards the end of the round where, you know, the others have been taken out and the site is being pushed. And so, yeah, it's certainly something they need to improve. Volps is looking to get aggressive here. I think he just wants to try and up the tempo a little bit. You can see that Solar Scanner is just providing him the information that there's at least two on drones outside of that door, but he's not going to move in to make a challenge just yet. Uh, instead, he's going to be chased down by drones. We'll continue to take them out. That's leaving W7M with only five to work with now. Yes, now last time round, we saw this push coming in through this pantry side. If you remember, it was the breach in charge in the wall. They charged straight in and got the plant down with a little bit of support from drum up above to deny the hatch so the attack the defenders couldn't play around it and shoot the plants coming in from above. So three players really was enough to make this attack work. This time around, they're still all five alive. We've got things like the Ying on side. We've got the EE1Ds ready to get called out. We've got the two drone-based operators. There is so much information coming. And oh, Volts. Baited out a little bit there, saw the one man sat on drone, assumed he was alone, but no. Bolts was there ready and waiting, and like Domino's, Liquid are falling one after the other. Palu getting himself involved once again, but Tim, it feels like the damage has been done. It certainly does. W7M, they're playing Liquid like a fiddle at the minute, Des. There's absolutely nothing that Liquid can do. Everything they try, every move they make, it seems like W7M are one stop ahead. I don't, don't think know. that Nesk has been seen on this drone. That could be something at least if they haven't picked him up in that corner somehow. That could be serious danger, but they do know that another man is down, leaving it effectively one versus four. Nesk is going to have to have a superhero effort here if he wants to be able to close this out. Manages to find a nice first onto Nade, but then takes damage and cut down by JV92. This is a real dismantling, like next level dismantling at the minute. It doesn't even look close, but we do get that side swap now that I mentioned. Liquid have got one room of breathing room. They're down five and one. They can lose one round and they can be sat at match point to the other side and guarantee at least overtime will be what we see. So really, again, you've got to see him come out strong in this half. W7M winning those first three rounds in a row before we saw the tactical timeout coming in. Can Liquid do the same unto them? I'm just a bit concerned for, for Liquid there, Des. Looking at the, the team, it seems, like I say, a little bit low energy, a little bit. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just worried if the, the pressure isn't too much. You know, we've seen this um, final after final from Team Liquid that they get into these positions, they get to the semi-final, they get to the final, and they just don't seem to be able to get it over the line. You know, they've, they've spoken a number of times, Nesk has said it in this tournament, you know, this is the one. This is the one where it will not be taken away from us. This is the one where we're going to push it over the line. And you just see it in, you know, both esports, traditional sports, sometimes where these teams they, they get there so many times that the actual winning of it becomes the problem itself. It's not about skill, it's not about ability. Um, and at the minute, things are certainly running away from Liquid. They are. Absolutely are. However, we are into a fresh half, Tim has said. Things can change very quickly once you get into the second side of things. Maybe, I mean, we've seen it actually a few times ourselves across this competition, where teams suddenly start winning things out and once we get onto the attacker side of guns, maybe here that plays in Liquid's advantage. Generally higher damage on them, better scopes on them. It does work against the defenders. Just hard to call which way this goes without seeing. Looks like the prime for a jump out of the shrine window here in Volps. He's conscious of those kind of shenanigans. Not going to bother going for it, though. So for now, Volps lives to see another day. A lot of vocal support here in Copenhagen for Liquid. Uh, the fans in attendance certainly wanting to see an improvement from the Brazilian side, wanting to really push their country mates to the limit here uh, because W7M are certainly on cruise control right now. And that's the other factor here. When I look at W7M, I feel like they've still got more to give potentially in this situation. And again, that's another problem. If they're not being stretched to their limit to get to 5-1, you know, what else can they do? If, if Liquid do manage to start winning a few rounds. What are we going to see out of W7M? JV92, he's certainly prepped, primed, ready to go, looking to get himself out of that window, potentially, and just bring that bit of aggression again for W7M. One minute 15 into the round, and we've got some Candelas coming in. Hurts oh, is going hurts. to challenge Shun, how he manages to survive. He should have been absolutely screwed and dead to rights there, for sure. But no, as you say, does keep himself alive only just. Bolts once again re-exposing the angle. Great shot, the pre-fivers there. And Casey sadly just side straights right into it. 
Need to really, as I say, push the benefit now that they've got that man advantage. Something Liquid have been unable to do so far. They keep letting W7M reel them back in and level things up. JV92 going to reposition himself onto the drum stairs there. Sort of giving up that drum and shrine area now. With a minute left to go, that should be plenty of time for Liquid. They've got themselves access into Geisha as well. They've just forced the defender back. Need to be cautious, of course, of anybody around drum stairs and the soft wall that leads into sight. JV92 is going to pick up a kill onto Palu. Candela goes in, and really, Liquid need to do something on the back of this utility. They do. But this is always the frustration up here. We've seen a few times across the competition for Liquid as well, and it's not just Liquid, to be fair. Most teams have, have fallen short of this a few times where they get the entry, things really slow down, and they don't really look to capitalise on the back of it. It's not a bad thing slowing down, but you let the other team back into things. Reset, getting the trade there, which is good positioning from him inside of Geisha. Now into a three versus three. 20 seconds on the clock. I'm nervous for Liquid, team, but they find the opener, and they get two more nice and quick. Liquid finally getting themselves on the board, it feels, with some level of conviction but it is still a big hill to climb. No nerves required, does as Liquid manage to get the job done. And you just saw that energy creeping back into the team. That's what we need to see from them. And you feel like if they can get a couple of rounds, it gives them the opportunity to shout, to cheer, to celebrate, and to really pick themselves back up a bit. That was a better round, and it was an important one. First one on attack, Liquid can start believing now that yes, the side switch is going to be the difference maker for us, and we can fight our way back in. Ooh, all right. Does show that there's still some fight there, and again, it's the point I kept making. Two halves to a game of Siege, different guns on different sides can completely transform the way that these things play. I did love this initial pinch coming out from Liquid, though. I thought the way they got the cells set up around Shrine with the window being pressed, also had the hard breach gadget come through. It was somewhat stemmed by the side of W7M with the keeper barriers blocking bolts off, and instead making it more of a one versus one. But maybe a little bit stubborn and holding Shrine there and not looking to back away, and it cost them. Not quite everything, but definitely led to the downfall of the round itself. Back into round eight we go. It's going to be karaoke and tea once again, Tim. It is. We're going to uh, rinse and repeat. Go for the same site once again. W7M, I think, are going to be reasonably uh, happy with the, how the round went, apart from the loss at the end. It was those final kills Liquid able to move in and execute all at once. But W7M may be confident that there's a small tweak that they can make. I think burning a little bit more time would have been helpful. They had about 20 seconds left on the clock. Had they managed to sort of hold on to Drum Shrine and just re resist that push a little bit more for a little bit longer, it would have really helped them out in that final stage of the round as you can see w7m setting up barricades and a bit of utility over to that office side so it is going to be a little bit about trying to slow liquid down absolutely okay once again we'll see if liquid can keep this recovery effort going on or if w7m can squeak us over the line towards the potential end of the map we've seen quite a bit of drone play coming out of both sides at points as well the flores what I've actually really enjoyed this competition is seeing the variety of the kind of three drone-based operators, right? Twitch, it kind of feels as taking a backseat. You see her come out when it comes round to needing to clear away things like mirror windows. That's her main focus when she's picked inside of the game. The Flores and the Bravo we've seen as a pairing a few times, and sometimes you'll see Twitch mix in there with one of those two being changed out. So when teams really lean into that style of play, that's when things like the Mute and Mozzie really come in heavy. Look back at the first half, Liquid loved the Mute and the mozzie base play. W7M on the other side, not even going towards either of those two operators, instead leaning in towards playing the denial behind things like the Bandit, but also bringing along the smoke, an operator we didn't really see coming out from Liquid. JV92 going to be keeping himself in position in Geisha for the time being. Looking to hold on to that for a little bit longer than maybe they did last time. Um, just pushed out to the double door, but uh, cautious of the vertical holes opened up at his feet as well. That's going to be um, opened up by W7M. It's going to be angles that they're looking to use just to prevent that nade work from underneath, that roaming game underneath. Uh, what a utility burnt by the Rotero as well there. The barbed wire They are so gone. satisfying. They really are. <laughs> uh, barbed wire are already gone. Two ADSs go with it, but the more important utility, Palu gets taken down there in an opener from W7M. We just keep playing this rotation game. I think KZ has just replaced that Kiva barrier once again. So Felipox should be pretty dug in here. However, it's a push-up from Volt stepping forward quite aggressively round the back of the Kiva barrier, but it looks like the members on the side of W7M have already backed away. They have an inkling that he's on drum, and they know, but it's a great swing and free fire. Almost into a second, make it two! As Hertz does finally fall on towards Shrine side. That's exactly what Liquid need out of Volps. Those are the kills that they've been missing, but more Maybe coming two. from W7M in answer. 
leaving us now in a two versus two. It's all up to resets and Lagones. The Need to try and work their way up to get some sort of control over karaoke more than likely. We've got already resets stationed inside of Geisha. So there is an opportunity potentially for him to push in from there. But Lagonis, he's getting a little bit aggressive with the Gemini decoy here. Just trying to get inside a site and risking losing that utility. But it is giving critical information. Oh, one being found as well. It's looking good for Liquid here. There's one left and they want to pinch on to Shotgun in hand, can't find him! They make it too, that one looks a little bit ropey towards the end. But I'm glad to see Nesk is still as fired up as he was yesterday. He reminded me of the Nesk of old, you're seeing it that's here we as need. well. That's what. That's exactly what Liquid need, not just from him but from the team in general. You saw those first four rounds where they were really struggling, lost three of them and they were just so subdued, so quiet. And it's just not the liquid that we've seen so far. The last couple of rounds has been much more about that. Volps is starting to find his feet a little bit, find a couple of kills, um, and that's really going to help liquid to settle into things. Absolutely. I just feel... It's horrible to get excited about a possible comeback. <laughs> Where is Boyd? Sign shirt, please, Bikini. Sign my shirt, please. I'm sure he's in the audience somewhere. You guys have just got to keep on spinning around in circles, holding the phones up until he sees the light. I mean, he must have just seen it. The best thing is, if they go over to it, he goes over to sign the shirt, and the shirt says, yeah, I hate Bikini Body. Why would it? <laughs> no one hates Bikini. Officer and Exhibition is our next site. Round nine, yeah, then. As we see if Liquid can, can continue the comeback. Yep. Now, I'm looking straight away at the comp, and think about what I was talking about in the previous round in terms of drone-based operators and their picks. Twitch, very much isolated to a pick, not solely and exclusively, but in the vast majority of situations, it's when there is a mirror on the other side. What have we got on the other side? A mirror. Nades brought it along. We saw Liquid playing it back in the first half and very smartly holding on to one of them. That's what we often call a pocket mirror, keeping it in back pocket and being able to dynamically set up a second one when you need it somewhere else around the map. So really, Nesk is tasked in this round with getting rid of those mirror windows. I think if we don't see a W7M win in this round, it might just trigger that tactical timeout to come in from them, Des. Um, it'll be three in a row for Liquid. It'll be W7M seriously struggling on the defence of Skyscraper. Um, as we said, coming in, um, you know, not always a map that we see from them. And let's remember, this is their map choice, top right of your screen. Um, our wonderful production team puts up there for you who chooses each map. Um, Skyscraper was choice. Oh. W7M, JV92, an opportunity missed there as he just sees there head of the man through the steel beams but cannot mm. find him and he is going to be forced away allowing that wall to be opened i love the aggression that he showed there as well what you saw Paulo doing with the impacts was exactly the same as we saw the iana doing back in the first half but rather than just letting it go without any form of contest we see the step across to try and take him down as he's holding the angle ready to fire in the second a really good read i think into that kind of play and looking to get a kill in response if it works out the man's a genius Certainly is. Uh, we've got the Lion of Resets upstairs just getting off the drones now, looking to progress that push across at the top floor. Red Pink's coming out constantly, but no idea about Felipox on the drum stairs. Going to be cut down and leave Liquid at a disadvantage. Remember, this is not a round they want to lose. One more, and W7M have got a map point opportunity. I do. KZ at least looking around Shrine here with the ability to step back and forth with the use of these Kiba barriers. Still two in back pocket, it's worth noting. They can be redeployed even if we see any attempts at removing them come through. Limited utility on the side of Liquid for that. Selmas, you're not really going to commit towards it because you can shoot them off. And that just leaves the sole impact in the back pocket of Harley to make something happen. Volt starts off the fragging though, down goes the bandit as Nesk finds himself in a 1v1 but gets sideswiped out there by the army of KZ. It's going to be three versus three with no real advantage either way. W7M just trying to hold on, but Volps has got himself inside a side. Oh He's God. using those <laughs> candelas. But Lee Pox completely white flashed at the minute. Herge tries with the knife from underneath, but he's just a second or two too soon and doesn't find his man. Volps continues the challenge from inside a side. He manages to find one. Three versus two now. Advantage Liquid, but the time is ticking away. There's 20 seconds left to go. Lagonis really needs to think about sticking this diffuser. He's halfway through. He's going to try to hold Hold on, it will be there. The cover was in place. Palu one, but not two. As Hurts, he starts the retake. It's another really tense retake. We keep coming to these 1v2 situations time after time. He's not really looking at the floor, and Bolts gets the shutdown. Tim, two hearts to a game of Siege, and Liquid have won three back to back.
And unsurprisingly, I even said this in round six, tactical timeout for W7M. Yep, not too much of a surprise. We said if they didn't win that round, we were likely to see it three in a row for Liquid. Fans getting on their uh, feet, get, you know, getting loud about this Liquid side now. A lot of support starting to pour out, um, and Liquid have really well and truly got themselves back into this. But if I'm W7M, I'm worrying a little bit at this point, Des, because I'm thinking this is our map choice. Uh, you know, Liquid are happy to take us back to bank, and we're getting reeled back in here. I feel like W7M maybe felt like there was an opportunity for them to to, to surprise us with this map pick and it certainly happened when they were on the attack but the defense has just not been there for them no absolutely not we've seen it too many times tim uh, i know i mentioned it again i keep digging up like old points here but things just can change so much once you get onto the second side of a map different guns different comfort ops whatever it might be even just the way that a certain map can lean sometimes this one interesting i don't think was one of our attacker leaning maps so to see a 5-1 out of W7M and potentially the same here building for Liquid. <laughs> Pretty unbelievable. Certainly is. Uh, tactical timeout will be coming to an end very, very shortly. Um, W7M have had their opportunity. We are, in fact, back into map. It's going to be round oh. 10. It's going to be karaoke and T once again. A site that we've actually seen so far twice from W7M. Round 7, round 8. Lost both of them. Um, but a considerably different setup this time, Des. It's a really interesting mirror they've got coming out here. My main concern to it is it's very exposed from both Shrine and from Drum. So W7M are going to have to, they're going to have to really aggressively hold both Drum and Shrine side, which could lead to a bit of a overcommittal on utility on that side. I would have expected to see a shield going down. Maybe Neighbor that in back pocket will deploy that up towards Shrine side, one of the more standard ones that we see. Or he puts it on Black Stairs looking up towards Shrine balcony. But if I'm looking at this as the attack inside a team, look it, I'm just saying, you know what? Forget about Drum, forget about Shrine. Why don't we just go in through Geisha? And that may yet be the hit that we see. Once again, this single reinforcement with the mirror window on it, by the way, is here. But it's the cheekiness of Herds playing right up against the softball, hoping to find someone when they repel up here, which could be the play. Oh, no. That was the Nitro going to be a little bit too soon, though. That will not find its mark. Look at this, look. Herds gives up uh, that utility. What I mean. Mirror window cleared out, though, as you said. There's very perilous position for that gadgetry, for that utility. And W7M just giving a reasonable advantage to Liquid now with that line of sight available all the way through the bomb side. They just have no idea I think they're losing this utility, that the Mute Jammer's gone. For if he gets another mirror window here, this is unbelievable. There we go. Herds does spin at the right time and destroy the Shock Drone. They must have a good idea now if they are not currently aware that the other one is Rio. gone, though. Um, but certainly fighting with their lives to keep a hold of the one looking onto the potential breach into office. Uh, Volps is a looking to pressure that side of the map. Liquid not in yet. And they're just not rushing, Des. I like this. Um, you know, they're taking their time. They're making sure the drones are going in, that they've got each step done before they try to push to the next. Jammed out on the below, though, the mute. <laughs> Denying everything away, and they can't get in with the shock drone. That's also been disabled. So they're going to have to try and force this a different way. I just accept they're not going to get that VIP wall opened up. Unless maybe they can nade him from below. They have got that in back pocket. But this is a real smart play coming out again. There's challenge downstairs from W7M trying to keep Liquid at bay on the downstairs so they can't make use of Palu's nades. Yep, utility is being used here from Team Liquid literally just to try and get inside of the building, let alone actually facilitate anything to happen on site. For Leapox manages to get the opener onto Volps, who again has had a little bit of an up and down game so far. But Palu and Resets, they managed to find one apiece, and this is the danger of this Team Liquid site. You take one down, but there are still more serious threats as Nesk he manages to find for Leapox, and this could be Liquid about to tie things up on Skyscraper. It's happening, Tim. They're bringing it back from the brink. That 5-1 up to 5-5 five, five looks to be all but locked in unless they really mess things up in this last 45 seconds. First one found out by Hurts, but it gives away the information on where he is. These last three players should know. Hurts rounds one at nice and close. Can't quite finish off his man, and Hurts will do all he can here. He can force a one versus one. Can't find his man. Four rounds on the bounce, and Liquid have brought things square. Well, we wondered at what point Liquid were going to wake up, Des. They walk up at the side switch, and we could be seeing Team Liquid run back this map the whole way. It is still possible. It, it was a 5-1 half to W7M in the first half, and Liquid right now might just be saying, yeah, watch this. These, this could be one of the craziest swings I think we've ever seen. I think back to a couple of games, I believe back in the old days of APAT North on old console. Interestingly, it was Sandbox playing in a game. 
Well, they were up six or down six and zero, maybe up six and zero. I forget. The other side came back to win eight and six, eight rounds in a row. So for Liquid, it's not quite the same gravity and challenge before them of a 6-0 fight back. It was five and one, but it's still got that same feeling to it. It really does. And for W7M now, you've got to start questioning that mental game, Des. You know, much as I've said that there's a lot of pressure on Team Liquid every time they get to a final now, it's kind of getting to be the same way for W7M. They came in May last year into their first major in Charlotte, and they've had expectations around this team ever since. Um, you know, especially reaching the grand final at an SI, you feel like they're a team that can and should win something. And you just wonder, when you start getting reeled back in on a map like this, how much does that play into the minds of the players. Absolutely. Oof. Real scream turning, turning up here. I thought for the first six rounds, also, I imagine most of you watching at home or in the audience thought this one might just be done and dusted, but real interesting bounce back. Small difference in strategy here compared to what you saw in the first half from Liquid 2. The Mute and the Soulless on side for W7M. It's so where we saw a little bit of Mute Mozzie, but primarily just Mute by itself out of Liquid. KZ's doubling down on the Mute here, not with the Mozzie, but with the Soulless instead to help sniff out these drones. Of course, more impactful than just hunting down the drones themselves is knowing where they're coming from. What areas of the map are Team Liquid trying to drone out? Where do they want to start this push? Where do they want to send an entry player in? I mean, you can't really be doing that if you're going down too early, Tim. It's not been the map for KZ. One of four he currently sits at, Tim. Not the performance that we're used to from him. No, very quiet so far. And what I like, I've, I've got to raise the, the, the fact that we commented how Lagonis was leading the way in frags. He's continued to do that for his team, mm. but the others are stepping up around him now. Volts on eight, Palu on seven, Nesk on seven. All starting to just catch up a little bit here. And that's the difference, really, that you see in between these two teams, where they're stepping up, as you say. KZ still struggling a little bit here. Just the one kill. They're more reliant, W7M, on Philippox winning those rounds, on getting those frags. And if he has a quiet one, then it's a problem. Absolutely. And he's in a good spot here to do some... Oh. <laughs> I thought for a second we were going to see a knife coming out, but no. A little spray to the head turns out to be more than enough. Who would have thought it? Hurts after getting that kill. He's going to retreat back into his position behind the shield at Shrine and just try to hold on for as long as possible. Oh, okay, Philippox. What a reaction from Philippox. I've just picked up on him saying you can't keep relying on him for all these frags, but Turns out you whilst can. he delivers, you keep relying because that puts him up onto 14 so far in the game now. And what an absolute beauty. It was almost casual, that kill. Oh, I mean... Quite literally looked like it with the first one, the second a little bit of a different story. Liquid for that first time, finding themselves down in numbers, and it feels like with how things have gone, 40 seconds on the clock, it might get a little bit ropey. Herds has worked his way up, sees one inside a Geisha, but misses the critical shots, resets. Given a second lease of life here as well, the ability to make something happen. Just going to drop in with the flash on backside as well. Not quite aware that his teammate was coming in behind him and looks the wrong way. Isn't prepped for the challenge to come out of Nade. Nesk gets one back, but it's a one versus three. Make it a one versus two for Nesk. It'll have to be a 4K to close things out here, but he's only got 15 seconds to play with, Tim. It's not going to happen. W7M moves up to match points. After a mammoth fight back from Team Liquid, W7M finally managed to stop the flow and managed to get themselves around. Map point opportunity for Liquid now. It is either overtime or nothing out of Skyscraper. Liquid no. is solid, not at the moment. I mean, it's never. It's not solid, it's uh, Liquid. It is, that's very true. In the state Sci of science. Sci scientifically accurate, does. Someone didn't study too much science at school, I'm afraid. <laughs> Ice side doesn't really quite carry the same connotations as rock side either, so that one doesn't work. Still, we go towards a different site, exhibition and office for the side of W7M to try and hold this one down. Once again, leaning in towards the Solus, but rotating which players are playing it. It was KZ previously. This time around, it's Herds. And I have got that about a good few teams, to be fair, at the competition is you go down and look at who's played what ops throughout the competition. Some of them, like, I think on most teams, two players have Yana as their most played operator. They're always rotating around who's playing what on given sites. So long gone are the days where someone's just to go to Ash Main and that's all they play. There is a lot more variation and, dare I say, creativity coming out from teams. Makes you hard to predict because where, you know, KZ might prefer, um, prefer a particular route or place to play on the soul, it's her to prefer someone else. And it just keeps you guessing and asking questions all the time. It's not predictable to play against. 
certainly does look we'd have had the answers for the last couple of rounds but not there in round 11 w7m's opportunity now it's office and exhibition that they're going to be defending this could be the end of skyscraper or it could be the start of overtime it all depends how the next two minutes 40 goes liquid getting themselves up to the line of the building plenty of attention being paid to those drones information game as we've said jv92 just trying to play with the bandit underneath there being supported by the azami but that's cleared out and that's going to be the floor opened underneath which in turn will allow that wall to be open ah he was thinking about trying to go for the deny there i think he spotted a player through the bars on the downstairs who this time round parley wasn't stood dead still not expecting to get sprayed this time around he did expect the challenge and kept himself safe but still enough that he was able to do at least a little bit of damage these bandit batteries now are going down on the office double wall so maybe there's some work to do from below here for liquid to get that one rooted away I've got to say to him, I do find it really interesting. We've seen Bandit in quite a few rounds, but not once of us in Thatcher on the board. No, this is it. Uh, you know, it's, uh, you'd be forgiven for thinking if you've tuned in like, that Thatcher was banned out, as, you know, is not uncommon. But no, Thatcher is available. But to be honest, they've been able to work around oh, that's the, it. the denial pretty easily. Um, so, again, just choosing to bring uh, additional utility. That's it. So if you're in the honor have been enough with the nades and the impacts coming in 100%. I just put it with the amount that we're seeing things like the mutant mozzie as well that it, it kind of says actually you know what bringing them on the mps it's more for just the bandit it's more than that that we can make it work with just neither team have opted into it just yet you can see herds doing a lot of work underneath here with the solace uh, you know many many uh, options when it comes to that gadget it's not just about feeding information back into your team it's about denying it to the enemy five drones taken down so far um so liquid just at a point of maybe being oh what a c4 starved of information and starved of life as jv92 manages to get a nitro and that could be a step in the right direction for w7m police box is just planted waiting on the house there's on that warden as well of course with the gadget can ignore any flashes that come on through it expires here resets is in almost lost his kill spins for the second and can't find his man two quick kills coming for liquid here until we could be on the way to overtime nate misses but gets the knife on resets it's down to a 1v2 nesk has got it all to do spins for the one but cannot find it W7M takes Skyscraper. What a flurry of kills at the end of the round there. It was getting wild. You were getting that momentum from Liquid, but not enough. W7M, they take Skyscraper. Out to a quick break before our desk break down that map. Well, we find ourselves here once again, backstage at an esports event that's a bit in progress. I'm Emmy, duh, here to give you another tour of what it's like behind the scenes and what you can expect if you're visiting us here in Copenhagen. That way, please. Ian, what have you been paid for this? Now, the first thing you might be wondering is, well, what is all of this? Which means I take you over to maybe the scariest thing about esports, the talent green room. You might think, is esports a scary world? Esports! I'm scared. See? Hi, is this uh, lights or sound? This is audio, sound. Audio? Yeah, yeah. We are calculating a lot of frequencies here. Hey, Andreas. Andreas, where are you going? What's your job? Hi, guys. What do you do? I'm uh, supporting this lovely woman. Hi. Um, the talent support, and I'm helping her be there on time, make sure everything is here. Easy job? Very easy. She's very easy to handle. Okay, thank you. There you go. I am here on the main stage. Fresh as Mike, his Milosh's, ready for him tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing would be for me to see right now is if I just did this. <laughs> what, are you, what are you gonna do now, huh? <laughs> We have the cup. Look at this in all its majesty glory. I don't think anyone is supposed to be up here. 
I think we're leaving a lot of footprints. You can find yourself here in our activation space alongside the helpful faces to play some of the older Rainbow Six titles. I think it's you. We've been sat here for two hours. <laughs> Come on, I'm so talented. The greatest minds of this game use this to just really bring an edge to everything that we do here on what is a marvelous production. That's the director of our show. I have never seen anybody more European director than our wonderful director. And I'm excited for him to see this. And that's everything that we have for you. We've got everything. So pull up a pew or a chair or wherever you are and enjoy everything that we have here in Copenhagen over this weekend of some of the best Rainbow Six there is. And that's a wrap. I got problems on problems on problems on problems on problems on problems I solve them. I run through the money, the pressure be calling. Left on my blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back. Tell me I'm garbage, I'm going through something. That's why I ain't calling. Phone and progression, it's all that I wanted. The phone and affection, I summon and dub it. Cause I got problems on problems on problems on problems on problems on problems I solve them. I run through the money, the pressure be calling. Left on my blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back. Tell me I'm garbage, I'm going through something. That's why I ain't calling. Phone and progression, it's all that I wanted. The phone and affection, I summon and dub it. Why you be all in my line about? Why won't you go get you a dollar or something? Don't hang with a who lying for nothing. I see that we different, you riding, I dub them. I don't do discussions on bragging about hundreds. Don't go to your places, I know that they sunken. Don't call me your brother, I barely can trust it. I talk to a shorty, she bagging the bucket. And I'ma need all of my dollars on corporate, so hand me the money, I divvy the pie. I'ma give all of my people a portion to build them a fortune, I'm flipping the ride. I can't be mixy when iffy the vibe. And 40 on 50 is really the time. Why is you all on my phone like you want me? Like you wasn't pushing the kid to the side. I'ma run through the money, the press will be calling. Left on my Blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back. Tell me I'm garbage. I'm going through something. That's why I ain't calling. I remember things seven years ago. Naquela época, tudo era menor. Mais en chacun d'entre nous, la flamme brûlait déjà. Über die Jahre sind wir zusammengewachsen. Et hoy, son millones los que nos apoyan. Mina san no oen wa, wale-wale no gendo ryuk des. Besev di mizishi ap mamuzo no xao liusunus. La sing langi, ja pen pai madai ta hat, la mai mi po kun. Devemos tudo isso a vocês. Dafe vil vil saia. Gracias. Obrigado. Khao pun khao. Danke. Arigato. Kiitos. Merci. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you. Welcome back everyone to some in-depth analysis of how W7M was able to play so well the attacking side on Skyscraper. For now, they're up 3-0 on attack against Team Liquid because they've been able to go for roam clears and suppress them in opening engagement. Now Liquid strikes back with one defense on their own, adapting to that playstyle by bringing trap operators. They bring Legion, Capcan, Frost. So now we're in round five and W7M wants to strike back with a round on their own by hitting the site directly. And it all starts with what's going on here. We have a group of three players working the top floor area on the bomb site. Each one of them is working different areas, right? You've got the solo wall, you've got the window here, you've got the doorway and the solo wall here and the bridge. Classics of Siege, for now, they're just opening the bomb site. I want one detail here for you to pay attention to. Um, the Mira window that's set up right here is watching the bomb site directly and preventing them to attack it for now. 
And now look at Ace. He's already ready to throw his Ace charge onto the mirror window and get rid of it. We let the round play. You'll see how it goes. He throws that Ace charge onto the wall. We're going to take a look here. He throws the Ace charge. Can we let the round play, please? And boom, he's opening the mirror window. Now this is key because now they have no vision on the bomb side. At the same time, Ash from below is opening a line of sight that's going to be key again. So no mirror window here. And at the same time, a line of sight from the Ash from below to prevent the player on the side to watch that doorway and Amaru coming in. Now, the real goal here is to take control of the bomb side, right? So let's take a look at what they're doing. Two players are isolated on the bomb side. These two here are the main threats to a plant right now. So Amaru is coming in from the hatch and is going to challenge that, challenge that player from the hatch directly. At the same time, this player is pinched from the doorway and from this player coming into it. Now, if we let the round play again, you'll see how they get rid of it. First one dies, second one dies, they've got side control. Perfect setup. Now, one player remains a threat for them here, the Melusi on the bomb side. And they're going to play a 3v1 against him. Again, W7M playing in crossfires. This player has a line of sight directly on him. At the same time, Aru can come in and trade him. And at the same time, Lion has jumped in the window and can also trade. We'll let the round play out again. Let's see how they do it and kill this last player. Now, the, the third step is to get the plant in. And look at it. It's perfectly set up. She comes in and plants safely hidden behind the bar here. So there is no way they can, they can get killed. The only thing that they need to focus on right now is cover the flanks. Only two areas where they can come from. This first doorway and the second doorway. And again, WCNM will be ready to trade them. If you look at their setup, you've got one player holding the first flank and two players holding the second one. We can let the round play and you'll see there is no way the defenders can retake this. The first one will die here, stuck by the lion. The, sun, the second one here, again, by the double crossfire. Really, really good play from WSNM, hitting the side directly, problem solving, grouping up, ready to trade. Great job from WSNM to adapt and change their playstyle in attack. Now I'm going to throw it to Milos and the rest of the desk. Thank you very much, Alpha Man on the Knowledge Station. Welcome back to the desk and a valiant effort for Team Liquid to try to claw Skyscraper back. But fortunately for them, W7M stand strong and are able to close map number one. I'll have a try. What you want to see, though, every team starting off in the best of five, you want to win your map ban or your map pick, I should say. Only one ban ahead of this, of course. So important map for W7 to win. Even if we thought Liquid may have had the advantage coming into this one because they had that history on it, W7M came in so ready for this one. It's very clear they've been holding the map back to bring it out in the grand final when it was needed. Here is our map pick. We don't hate it. We actually play it, and we've been holding it back. One thing that I would say for W7M is they were taking so much ground that was just given to them. In, on the screen, Alfama then was just showing an attack where it was a direct attack and W7M had control of below site, around site, the breach of site, for free. They had not had to contest it. They got that control in a 5v5. I thought for the most part, for the first probably six rounds all in all, Liquid looked quite scared. They looked quite timid. They didn't want to take these fights. There was one round, round six here, where they did try and W7M were ready for it. But it had been five rounds to get to that point. That's not the liquid we saw yesterday. Sure, they got a valiant effort, but they really set themselves up, you know, with a massive uphill task on the half. And he had his best game yesterday. He may have just topped it today. We have to talk about Felly Pox. The way he started yep. this matchup, pushing so well with his teammates. I thought he did a really great job of being that kind of second uh, entry into the site, being that pinching force who can come in when everybody's distracted by maybe the Amaru coming up the hatch or the brunt of the push. He was in there. He was finding frags. And when they swapped to defense, I thought that he was still fragging, but it was much more solo. No longer with the team in those pushes, often out by himself on the roam. And those kills often felt a little less impactful, which is why I think you saw his kill count continue to rise. The round count continued to rise for Liquid instead of his team W7M. But those last couple of rounds, he kind of reigns it back in. He's playing more with his team once again. He's able to help them out in those site holds when uh, Liquid runs in and has their big site executes that they love to do. Really well done coming in by Felly Pox. I think you've got to give him a lot of credit for their win in this game. Oh, Jack. Who's making it happen for W7M to get that oh so important first map win? I think you, I've got to double down on this Felipe Pox point is that he's had such a good game, but also he IGLs the team, right? So it's like yeah. he, he's playing in the front line, IGLing the team and getting these big frags. He previously was a star player on his roster and is now kind of transitioned to be more of a, uh, he's not even, you can't even call him a support player because he's kind <laughs> of got a big high kill game in quite aggressive roles, but an IGL and a leadership figure in this team and he's doing an excellent job of it. 
you got to be proud of the young guy coming onto the roster, right? You uh, wouldn't expect that coming in for his first tournament with the team, but he's done great. Would you like to show us something? Jeff? Oh, yes, I would, Milos, because I have been waiting forever. Since we revealed <laughs> Brava at the Six Invitational, I have been waiting, begging for this to happen. I've got a little clip to show you guys, because we have finally seen, at least for me, the first time that a Capcan trap has been hacked and we have been able to see a player be downed by it. It was oh. incredible. Round number six, we got to watch it. It was really, really sick. The Brava drone came on in from Herds um, and uh, managed to hack the cam. Here we go. I've got the clip for you, and this is the only time that W7M brought the Brava, whether it was specifically for these cap cams or not. It's tough to say. There were other uh, things that you could hack on the board. Of course, the bandit batteries, the goo mines. Previously, that door was just barricaded. There were no cap cams on it, but of course, Herds hacks that, and then it's resets. Unexpected. You see it hacked in the corner, but he's sprinting through, and he does does get down, he dies in that position. The first time that I personally have seen a competitive kill with the Capcan hacked uh, traps. Really impressive stuff. Well, now we got to turn our attention to our second map in this best of five series, Bank. And uh, throughout the end, especially, of that first map on Skyscraper, I could hear cries coming out all the way from California. Jenna was just sitting there and thinking, Oh, damn, I can't believe Team Liquid are taking L's. But we even have Liquid fans here with a Yumpy jersey. So I think they, you have the wrong game in this case. <laughs> but still, fair enough, I'll give you an A for effort. We'll go to Bank, like we said, and this time it is Liquid's pick. They start off on the attack. Jack, what are your thoughts? I think we, both me and Jesse, thought that it was a reasonably surprising pick because in terms of preference, it's both very low for W7M and very low for Liquid. However, they did play each other in the best of one in Phase 2 on this map where Liquid lost to W7M. It was a big clutch by that man again, for Leapox that turned the game basically. It was a 7-5 win. And also W7M, in the history over the last year of these two rosters, have beaten Liquid twice on bank. So it's a very surprising pick to see from Liquid. But obviously they felt something. They played them and they felt that they could change, you know, a few small things and put it into quite a con convincing victory. Yeah, obviously last time they played it, it was 7-5. It was a very close game. There were a lot of thrown advantages uh, coming through from Liquid as well. So I think they're thinking of this map like, listen, we clean a few things up, we take this over them, and W7M probably weren't expecting this map to get picked out because, again, you've already beaten this team on it. So surprise factor coming in, favoring Team Liquid. They know what their mistakes maybe were in that last game. There's kind of a saying in Siege, when you repeat a map, oftentimes it is the other side that uh, wins the rematch. So we'll see if that's true here today. Final thoughts on this? Now I'll put you on the spot. Who takes map two? I think we get a 1-1 series here, Milos. I think it's Liquid for uh, the tie-up. I think Liquid looked much more comfortable on the attack on Skyscraper. Obviously, that's where they will be starting onto Bank. Um, and they came in strong. They've got, even though they lost the map, they somewhat do have the recent momentum. So I would back that we would go 1-1. Who's got to show up on Liquid to make it happen? I want to see more from Paulo. He started really quiet on that game. You know, I think he was one in five at some point, uh, one in six to start that half. He really didn't have a fantastic start there. He was getting shut down early and often on their defensive roam. So I want to see Paulo in the server a little bit more. Obviously, he's been a big player for Liquid so far in the tournament, but we need to see him today. I think now that Liquid have settled in, that they got into the game in that skyscraper. They're playing a little bit more aggressively. They're ready for it. I think they were just overwhelmed. So yeah, I would agree with Jesse. I'd like to see Paolo step up. All right, maybe we'll get a one-to-one. Copenhagen, -one. can I hear your noise? <laughs> Our casters ready, our players are, that's for sure. Let's bring it out. It's big time, baby. Thank you very much, Milos. Map number two coming right up. Bank. Now, we all came into this saying, oh, this looks like a good start for Liquid. This could be a 2-0 to get things off to him. Suddenly, maybe we're not so confident going into the second map, given how W7M started out the series. No, I mean, Liquid had that run back, didn't they? There was a second there where you just thought, they're going to do this. They're going yep. all the way with this, a 6-0 half, but they just couldn't get it done. W7M able to dig deep, knuckle down, yep. get the map won. It was important. It was their choice, as Jesse said, coming into Bank now. It's a map that W7M won last week 7-5 but it was tight it was close and Liquid obviously have studied that and think that there's something they can do because it's their map choice so if they'd have been able to pick up Skyscraper it could have been a real back foot for W7M but nope we've still got a close game what I love is that when you're looking at the numbers, Bank has been one of the air quotes weaker maps. I mean, W7M truthfully <laughs> don't have too many weak maps, but you look at the history, it is one of their weaker maps. Bank for me, I've got actually down as their lowest preference map, their lowest round win rate out of the bunch since the start of 2023. Yeah, it almost feels like they've just saved everything for this moment, coming into a best of five and saying, you know what, actually, we're very happy to bring this out. We're very happy to have this played against us here. We beat you there once, let's keep on running on that same sort of theme. 
The audience still very much behind Liquid, though. You fancy yourselves a map three here where it's going to be a 1 1 scoreline, not a 2 0. I'm pretty sure we're all in the same boat, Tim. No one wants to see this one go and be done in three maps. No, absolutely not. And I think this, uh, you know, in that overall scheme of things, could be a pivotal map. Uh, as you say, if W7M do pick this up, then Liquid could be in serious trouble. Uh, Hibana will be our first ban coming out. Nothing too unusual on bank, just looking to protect those hatches. Absolutely. Um, next attacker ban will come through in a second. Team Liquid having a little bit of a think about it, but then locking their decision in, and it will be Ooh, a knock ban. Yeah, these two bans are really interesting because you won't see them banned away on many other maps. The Habana ban, as you've already mentioned, you know, she's identified as the queen of hatches. Her whole focus being able to rotate between two, four, or six X Kairos with 18 in the back pocket means that she can go all day long getting rid of four hatches. You need four X Kairos per hatch to clear them away. And the Nook, I think about a lot of teams in Europe, I think about Koi particularly, I think about crying when I say this, Tim. The number of players that really abuse the Nook on maps like Bank to come crawling through Garage later in the round and go for a backstab. It being banned away makes total sense, and you're also removing two nades away from the attacker team when there's only eight available out of the operators that you can choose. And the last two bands, we spoke about the Azami being available last map, a bit of a surprise. And the Valkyrie, certainly no surprise at all either. Going down to the basement, it looks like to kick Have things it. off, it's going to be W7M on the defence. If you've only just joined us, W7M took map number one on Skyscraper. They are 1-0 up at the minute in this best of five. Grand final here in Copenhagen, and map two gets underway. It will be Bank. Team Liquid versus W7M. Team Liquid starting out on the attack, and a good start is going to be essential here, Des. They were too slow to get going on Skyscraper. It hurt them. They need to come out of the blocks quicker. They do, and the big difference for this map, Tim, I think, with that batch now being employed a lot is because that Kaid is available on the other side. So expecting pretty much every round here to see the attackers bringing along the Thatcher. The one operator my eye goes straight to, though, is the Ying in with Lagonis. We've seen this operator throughout the competition. We saw it on the last map as well. Really, really powerful when it comes around to executes, and that's exactly what we're looking at here, is getting a couple of hatches opened up, dunking in a ton of those Candelas, and making magic happen. The Lion always going to be ever-present, I imagine. Again, as with the Doke B also available, you might see those two interchange throughout the map. Drawn in, already being done by Nesk. Uh, going to follow that in by the looks of things, looking to take control of uh, Square Skylight. So that suggests there's going to be an attempt for entire map control here from Team Liquid. Get in there, sweep across the top, work all the way down. And the reason for that is that W7M have got that open area office held at the minute. We can see them, Nitro's primed at the ready underneath, looking to maybe pick up a cheap Nitro kill to begin with. Sure. Pretty common thing we've seen so many teams employing is the normally the Iana on the entry supported by a singular drone. I think back to FaZe, for example, and the cyber combo that we saw with Handy, for example, looking to drone him forward all the time. It's a very similar style here that you're seeing coming out from Liquid. Looking to take some good control of this top floor with the support of the drone on the march on through. And Paul is now going to join his buddy up here on the top floor, looking like a full map clear coming out for Team Liquid. I think Philippe Ops might just get one coming down the stairs here. I'm not sure if he's aware. He took out the drone. There is a bit of ping information coming out. So Nesk, I think, aware that there is one playing towards Beepers. And Liquid yeah, no. just looking to get the claws down here. They know that there's one inside of Elevators. Nade is going to have to drop away. That's it. Mid-floor giving up halfway through the round. Not bad from Liquid. Oh, no. We do still have the Goyo inside of Open. And it's Herds who's going to do the damage. Kicks things off wow. with an opener. Gets down no the hatch. Way. Safety Nitro goes out. But no. Unsuccessful. Team Liquid, though, still on the back foot. Four versus five. That would have been absolutely mega out of Herds if he turned that into a second kill as well, but just walks away with the one for one here. I'll say one for one. C4 coming out, not finding a kill. The one kill, of course, coming across on towards Vaults on the other side. So a good start for the side of W7M. I was going to say the big thing to watch in this round is where Lagones plays. And very commonly what you'll see is an elevator drop coming in on the south side, whilst also seeing this kind of play coming out with the Candelas. It's a hot drop, though. It's a bit of a bait and switch here, Tim. They're not going to bother using Candelas, which is what W7M would have expected. They're just going for broke. And they've marched their way forward and already found themselves cutting down a couple. The W7M have to be able to react. They're losing out on these critical gunfights. And only two are left standing. 
standing. Hertz has to hold on here. He's got himself in behind the bomb chassis. The first Candela comes in. He's able to shoot it out. Takes his shot. Wow. Can't find them. Lagornis somehow works into a hail of fire to find Bobby the kill. One. Resets. He does get shut down. Palu down but not out, as you say. One versus one now. KZ looking for that final kill. Lagornis has been a great clutch player so far. He now knows where the man is. Seven versus seven. KZ says, does oh. need to challenge. But Lagornis takes him down seconds left to go and what an injection of pace and energy that Liquid put into this bank map. Energy injection was exactly what I was about to come on to. You'd think they just won the whole thing. Yep. <laughs> but they've won the very first round here on bank but what a fantastic 1v1 to win out as well. Again, I've really got to give credit to Liquid. It was a beautiful bait. All tournament long, we've seen Candelas get rolled down through the lobby hatch. At the same time, someone else drops inside of Elevator. In different times, it's not worked out. Timing's been a little bit off. But here, rather than opening the hatch and waiting and then chucking Candelas down and then maybe dropping 20 seconds later, they go for all, so all intents and purposes a hot drop led forward by the Ying. And it just works out so well. W7M caught completely blindsided in round one. Lagonis just continues to be unstoppable in the late rounds. He oh. just seems to have a knack of winning those 1vx situations. Picking up the 1v1 there, just predicts KZ's movement around towards the soft wall, sprays him down and gets the kill. Really well played from Team Liquid. They take round one and give themselves an advantage on bank. Ooh. All right, then. This is a bit of a different site coming out by the looks of it, Tim. Tellers and archives. Never normally see tellers and archives. It is that the black sheep of the family. Never really gets pulled out between it being by really any teams, to be honest with you. If sometimes it comes out as a bit of a crazy last second pick and teams are trying to surprise the other side. With the mirror on side, the dark, things like the cap can just feels to me like they're stacking up for a specific comp or setup here that they want to play against the side of Liquid. Now, I mentioned that you might see the line and the decay being changed out interchangeably here throughout the map. That's exactly what's happening here. Resets across it to the Amaru. Lagonis is picking up that kind of Roma Hunter responsibility of the decay Always going to be working the windows for the time being. Uh, potentially opened up the wall. Yes, you can see the line of sight that's been gained all the way down to elevators. So Nerd is going to have to be careful. Uh, Paolo's actually dropped off the repel, so he's not going to be there to hold that position, I don't think. But still, the awareness needs to be in the mind of the Solis uh, because expose yourself at your peril there. You can easily get taken down. He won't know that the threat isn't necessarily active. Expect going to jump out today, Tim. The weather forecast say jump out to the chance of rain. I, I, I would say, yeah, good chance of a jump out potentially on this map as it is. Nesk's looking for Janitor. He's going to find Hertz, takes him down with a big opener. Resets, doubles down on it, finds one of his own five versus three. And Liquid just sweeping across the top floor, Des, gaining that vertical control that they need. And they will start to push pressure and prod when it comes oh, to tell us an archives. Nesk, he's just hitting another level right now. It's impossible to have your finger on the pulse of this series. It's been so back and forth so far, and that's not slowing down. Reset's just walking his way into a cow can trap there for a second, but not quite finished off. It's a five versus one, and KZ has got it all to do. Isn't even sat on sight here. Has found himself slowly worked away by the pressure. As a flash comes in, very little that he needs to do is Lagonis yeah, is going to stick that, this diffuser, and that's about the round all wrapped up for the side of Liquid. KZ manages to find one in return, finds two in return. Nesk and Volps are taken off the board, but with the diffuser down, it's not time to get excited just yet. He knows that the man is dipping in and, si in and out of the small office, but he's got about 20 seconds left if he wants to do anything about this activated diffuser. Palu steps out, pre-fires the man, gets the round, and it's 2-0 Liquid. Better start, Tim. Looking at the way down, 3-0 on the last map. Had to call on the tactical timeout. Everything is working against them. You guys are loving these phone signs so far. They've got W7M takes it being shown, Tim. Ooh. Which way do you oh, lean oh. the series, actually? Which way do I lean? Um, at the minute... Because earlier you said 3-1, but I didn't catch which way you saw it going. I didn't. I just thought it'd be done in four. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't like, commit. I don't want to specify a team, but yep, four maps I are didn't, done. I didn't commit, but I thought it might be done in four. I think what I think is these teams know each other very well, and I think if one of them gets the advantage and is 2-1 up, then I think they're likely to finish that off at that okay. point. I don't think they'll let the other one back into it. That's it, that's it. I think they've just got too much respect for each other. They'll know that they need to get it done.
done in four, you don't want to go to five. Exactly that. I mean, Liquid's uh, hearts are broken, if you recall, all the way back at SI 2021, it was map five that was there and doing. Between them and now, Happy. The real battle for them was they played a series earlier in the day as well to qualify for that yes. grand final, then had a best of five, they went all the way to five, and we all saw it. They were just completely out of steam once we got to map five, whereas NIP still had a little bit left in the tank back then, and NIP were the ones to take home the trophy. A particularly emotional tournament as well, because, you know, Parley, bless his heart and soul, lost his dad during that competition and carried on playing, saying he'd want me to keep on going for this, he'd want me to win it all. May have come a little bit a little bit late, you know, 18 months on, but here he is with a good chance, and given how things have started on Bank, it may well continue. Certainly a lot of people uh, back in Liquid in terms of support for this I mean, one. I'll give you credit for this one, Tim. You say this all the time. Can you imagine a future for Siege where Nesk and Palu have not won an I just, event? That, you know, can you, like I say, you know, can you imagine five years' time, we're still doing SI, we're still in, you know, anything that's still going on, and you've got Nesk and Palu that, you know, didn't win um, in their heyday. How can you have that discussion about best player? Mm, I mean, Nesk has, I guess, back in 2018 in Atlantic City where they won. Pro League Season 7 Finals, but it's a bit of a different era for Siege these days, and with Palo on side, it's the pairing that we want to see really walk away as the winner. Bolt's going to be pushing into open area. Looks to find his man, cuts him down. Herds does find one at the same time, taking Nesk out, but it is still advantage liquid, four versus three, as they continue to push and try and get a hold of this top floor. They've lost the book along with Nesk, which isn't going to be the end of the world here. I think he might have had some hard breach gadgets with him, which will prevent um, a little bit of hatch work, but they do still have Lagornis on the Thermite, so they can get any sort of critical areas opened up. Similar story here where we've had Nade holding inside of Elevator and then dropping away. Parlo just being cautious that he might have baited it out and not fallen away this time, but sure enough, the man had left. And now they know that there's still one trying to challenge onto Marble Stairs. The number of times we've seen players just take a few steps up Marble, spin on a dime and get a kill onto a player that's being a little bit too relaxed, should we say, on the ground floor is ludicrous. Now, seeing a similar thing once again. Oops, the oh, he missed. That's not ideal. One EMP is going to be lost as it does not find its mark. Second one does, and Lagornis will open that lobby hatch. This time it's not going to be a drop. Liquid have to do things differently here. Uh, you know, the reason the last player worked is that it was a little bit unexpected, so they can't just keep rinsing and repeating the same no. thing. They do have the man advantage. They need to think about exactly how they're going to push onto site, but you just know this lobby hatch is being intently watched. That's exactly it. A really interesting late round uh, castle came out of Nade as well blocking off the double window that looks towards Elevators. So elevators isn't going to be as effective as a position here. It does mean that they can get a bit more control on the drop, which is exactly what they've done. Resets is in, and so far it feels like w 7 is about to say aren't aware, but they sure are. It's going to be a swing out from JV92, who's down to 2 HP, but still walks away with the kill. That's it, the important factor there was stopping that push from Volparlo, who does manage to find Nade, though, and that leaves W7M on a back foot. Nine seconds left to go. They're going to have to play for time here. Toxic oh. Pave, Canister and a Nitro. Fantastic use of utility. Three seconds, KZ just needs to hold on. But Volks, he's got the diffuser. He starts to put it down. He's got to find his man. KZ knows exactly where it's happening. Picks up the last kill, and W7M take round three. Getting themselves on the board, I think, is the important one there, Tim. Good for the mental, just to have something going for you. Still a pretty close one coming down to the one versus one. I really thought for a second we were going to see Volt push into his old teammate and look to try and go directly for the kill, but opted to try and stick with the Diffuser instead. 2-1 after three rounds. No tactical timeouts coming in here, as neither side has been 3-0, like we saw back on the previous map. So things can continue, at least for now. JV92 there, we're just seeing on the replay, such a critical kill because otherwise that pressure would really have mounted from inside a vault and the manpower swings the opposite direction and maybe there's an opportunity there for Liquid to get that diffuser down with a little bit of cover in place. But as it was, the one versus one was ended by KZ as we see there and they get themselves at least on the board here on Bank and just send Liquid a little message that this one isn't going to go all your way. So round four will be kicking off in the preparation phase. We see we are up on the top floor. It's going to be a CEO hold. Des, you want to jump out? This might just be your moment. <laughs> it's the kind of rounds that you look for it. I mean, looking towards the lineup, really, you only want the Jaeger to be the one committing that. The one obviously has the charging magnets that you don't want to see lost. Castle's not really a go-to jump out operator despite his work being done. Once he's got those four barricades down, Mira's most definitely not going to, despite having the Vector because of the C4 and the Solus. I just feel a little bit too valuable to really be looking to throw away at the early stages of the round. 
So no jump out to this round looks like to be the go-to response. On the attacking side for Liquid, I'm looking towards this Oster Tim and just thinking to myself, once again, it's execute heavy. It's focused maybe on the windows. They could try and push in through square. It does give them options and it can make life really infuriating for the defenders when you can do very little about the Oster. She just walks at you with that shield. Oh, we just speeded that information in once again, just being cautious. We quite often see the bottom floor roamers when you've got a top floor site. The defenders just try and get one down there and keep themselves off the radar, but Palu not allowing that to happen. It is KZ on the bottom floor, will be aware with the solar scanner that he has been drawn down. May have gone down there to particularly, specifically pick up that drone, um, but it's going to actually be JB92 who manages to find the first kill. I think that might have just been above KZ there, onto that marble stairs skylight that was just up above him but it's a great kill to take bulbs down and still struggling to make a real impact on this he's had his moments days he's had some big kills but not as dominant as we've seen recently i mean this is the hard thing right you can look at every single player on these two teams and say man they're usually so good and popping off yada yada when they come against each other it's going to be really hard to keep on having that kind of performance knowing there are players on the other side that can deliver just as well, if not better than you can. So it does become a bit of a map-based thing, I think, in this series, where you'll see individual players stepping up more so than others. But consistency might be really hard to build. Well, he's going to be holding his position inside of sight. The castle barricade is going to allow him to peek onto any potential breach spots, but also the windows as well. Paulo looking for that vertical challenge. Always need to be careful. For some reason, the fights just feel that little bit harder in Siege when they're uphill. Quite often, the one with the height advantage will come out. The victor, Paulo, just managing to keep fighting, but does take a ton of damage along the way. And needs to be very careful. It's only going to take one or two shots here to end his round for Leapox. He's going to take a lot of damage inside of sight as well as Liquid, they start to probe, start to push forward, see if they can get inside. What a beauty from Nesk, knows exactly where the man is, and a second! Ness is just that guy, if you give him an inch, he'll take a mile. Does he know about the man to his right? Yes, he does! No! Nesk baits in a beautiful line, but does not finish off the player himself. Sure, has put him down at least somewhat low. JV into another, into a second. Makes it a 3k for himself as Reset's going to try and save the round, but it's not going to happen. W7M up to two and two. W7M doing fantastically well to level things out there. Uh, the flank from the Jaeger particularly effective, able to pick up two, and it really ended any hopes that Liquid had. You felt that things pivoted a little bit on that round, Des, where Nesk didn't pick up the kill into Janitor. It just really sort of took the momentum out of that Liquid push. If he gets that, he continues on. They can move into sight, and all of a sudden, maybe the flank coming from JV92. That's the oh, opener that we thought This on. kill was great. It was absolutely beautiful. And then the second and just dips around, picks up the man on the left, nice and easy. But that one just loses that fight and makes life very difficult for Liquid from there. JV92 then able to hit them on the flank. It's why on the attack inside you'll see teams, regardless of where they're trying to attack from on that top floor, is they want to clear out Banana, which is the room out towards the west, make sure no player can hold the longer angles onto the windows. But you also want Janitor control for the exact reason you saw there just means that the player that wants to repel into CEO itself can do so relatively uncontested, unless, of course, you've got C4s on the downstairs. It's one of the reasons why I don't like that site particularly, Tim, and why I know a lot of pro teams don't either. Either way, we step away from CEO now for what may have been the last time as we'll go through our usual three-site rotation. It's going to be staff room and open area here in round five. We're going to see a similar defense uh, from W7M to the one that we saw from them in Tellers and Archives. We're going to try to hold on to that top floor. Wasn't particularly successful. Liquid um, were able in that round, I think it was round two, they were able to sweep across that top floor and take an awful lot of control quite quickly. But this isn't really the end of the world for W7M at the minute. They've got themselves two rounds, they've leveled things up. If they can get this, you start looking at a guaranteed even half at least, and they're not doing too badly overall. That wall we've just seen blown open normally gets reinforced off. So I think he was just about to do it, but Rotero <laughs> hit. And then the Rotero is just like, no. Rotero having absolutely none of it. We've got two spare reinforcements on side, as we can see, so not use Nesk. He's again just walking his way up here. Oh. He's going to pick one up. They had absolutely so no idea, does JV92, oh, no, but for Lee Box <laughs> is there for the trade. Four versus four as Nesk once again. We've seen him be the instigator so many times today. He's the one going in, looking for those kills, looking to push his team forward, just like he energizes them between rounds. He's trying to do that within the server, but it's just not paying off at the minute. I mean, that one there was a lack of information, a lack of 
of Troning really coming on through, and it's the same here again. I mean, they're thankful they get the trade on this one, but Felipox has done a lot of damage there. Without any drones on to it means for free, essentially, he could sit there and just pick off players. Admittedly, a mute jammer may have helped towards the effort of keeping him concealed from the drones. But it's a bit of a stinger. Three left for the side of Liquid. Nade and KZ with it all to do. KZ's thinking about moving on the flank here, using the saw as scanner, but needs to be careful. The man ahead of him knows that this is coming, is prepared, is ready, but no, looks away at the wrong moment. I think he is the noise, though. Moves back to his angle, but cut down by KZ. Resets manages to find Nade elsewhere. One versus two, Diffuser not in hand at the minute, and Resets and Palu both sitting on a bit of chip damage, so they need to be cautious. If KZ plays this smart, could potentially get back inside a site with a, a single gunfight, gunfight challenge here if he can win this out. Oh, great read as well. Palo treading the same steps that nested earlier, a full sprint in through the door. Just gives everything over to KZ. It's been a bit of a mistake made in this round by Liquid twice now. Down to this one versus one as reset. Wants to really force the issue. Flash is coming out, and KZ's going to get out of dodge. If he can play this clock, he can win it, but he wants the gunfight both down low. Yeah, one volley left for resets. Who finds the shot he needs? And Liquid take the round. Got to ask questions of KZ there. It was, you know, absolutely fine to go after that gunfight, but he knew what the stakes were. If he loses it, it is round over. He was so close to getting it done, but there was an option for him to potentially try and get away and burn that clock. But I think he was just a little bit cautious, a little bit conscious of the fact that he had a big target drawn on his back if he was to turn and run. Woo, OK. Really thought W7M were ready to take that one over the line. That first kill there. It's a little bit of a stinger. They couldn't get drones inside because of the jammer on the door. Like we remarked, could be there, but no drones coming in from the other side. No nades committed to destroy those jammers. And this is a really interesting point to yeah, note back from during the utility meta that is still somewhat relevant. Back when we had like six nades, sometimes even eight being brought along. What teams would often do is use frag grenades to essentially burn away ADSs, oh, ADSs, sorry, mute jammers that were sat on the other side of doors. In that sort of sense, mute jammers became like ADSs. They were anti-nade utility because you had to commit them to get rid of them, especially on maps or sites where there's very thin, narrow doorways, you have single doorways rather than doubles, or there's not really any good ways to get into a room other than by that single doorway. But here, almost kind of going back to the ways of old where nades weren't used for that purpose, and they paid the price through it by losing two players. But Liquid persevere, they get us up to three and two. And here, we've even got the zero coming on side, Timea. Operator that gets brought on this map more than any other odd wager, based on how some teams opt to play it. I know a couple of APAT teams play it, Sandbox and one of them. I know Koi, back when they were known as Rogue, used to play it a lot on this map as well, so much so that they used to draw zero bands away. Erds is going to pick up Volts with a, an early kill there inside of the first 25 seconds. Liquid maybe just switching off their focus a little bit at the beginning of the round there. Need to make sure that they're not giving away those early entry deaths, especially on the attack. It's going to leave them a little bit light-handed, and it's the, the Ying that's gone there. So that's really some big utility to lose Speaker. with the Candelas off the board, especially on a downstairs site. You'd expect them to use those to facilitate that final push. Interestingly, it also meant they had no hard breach on side. They were just leaning super heavily into six hard breach gadgets, as you can see at the top left corner of your screen. Two of those offline, not really going to be a round loser for them. Still got four they can make use of to get rid of the hatches above site. We mentioned the Habana being banned away. That's why you start leaning into things like these hard breach gadgets. Normally at least four, at least four coming along for a basement attack. Resets just... Conscious of the main stairs, doesn't want to be getting pushed or flanked, but good work coming in from Team Liquid here. They've got themselves good map control. Uh, they're going to be looking to That's get this timing. hatch open. They need Beautiful. the EMP to be coming in, which it will. Uh, that timing is unfortunate is, for, the just, for the attackers, but brilliant for the defenders. It really was. That catches it out in that, what, half a second that was available? Now to go again and commit once more here as well. Do they time it up again here? Second EMP coming on top just in case because they absolutely need that hatch open. But the problem now, I guess, is if JV has managed to... Well, he hasn't retrieved an electro core. Maybe there's still one hovering around somewhere if he gets it. They could deny away at least one of those hatches. Maybe the hallway one. 
And it'd be a big play. Toxic Babe Cannister to goes out from KZ. Just going to be preventing any pressure coming from top blue. Steps up. How about that for pressure? As Reset's managers to shut him down. They predicted that the push would come. And they took full advantage of it. The wall is soft ahead of them. So they're going to be looking to get that breach to open. Palu does have the soft breach charges in hand. So will be able to step up and open that wall. The angle now being held into sight by an Esk. 37 seconds left to go. Plenty of time left on the board for Liquid to get into a position to put this diffuser down. The poor KZ walking into a liquid firing squad at the top of stairs. They were ready and prepared, but they have been bleeding members here. Lost two so far. The Ying being the critical one. Palu finds one more. Spins for the second. That's what we're used to out of Palu hitting some big shots. A two versus one for Lee Pox, the clutch god of the competition. Can he do it here against two, Tim? The Talant's going down from Nesca. Nesca Palo's a pairing is exactly what you want. C4 over the top, they find one. They're going to have to push into this fight. He's going to sit in tight and just wait for the push to come in. Here it comes, a brief fire for Lee Pox. Cannot be stopped. He is the clutch master. How many times is Philippox going to do it? Seven or Nitro, eight now? Nitro in hand. We saw it yesterday. Nitro in hand, one versus three, and he was able to stop the Sonics. Nitro in hand, one versus two. He's able not only to stop Liquid, but to stop that combination of Nesk and Palu. They could not find him, could not win the gunfight, and W7M level things up 3-3 at the half. And I tell you what, Des, I think they might be happy enough with that. Woo! I mean, again, it started as a bit of a, a cascade, a waterfall of liquid, Tim. But W7M have fought their way back in here to keep things competitive. Seen two very different maps so far. The 5-1 start, the 3-3 here. Again, making it a really unpredictable final. And straight away, a little bit of a change here. Fun fact, actually, this is from Fresh Echo that Lagonus has brought along here. It's one of only two operators on the defensive side that have a less than 50% win rate. Yet here, clearly they feel it's a good opportunity to bring it along. Now, I think many would look back to the Deepak era of Echo, looking back to the Berlin Major, but I'm sure these teams may well remember, given FaZe were so close, yet so far from taking it away. It was a hurt for the Latam region overall. But the usage, the usage that we saw at Deepak on this operator to get out of drone holes, hop up high, to essentially drone in your entries around the map. Imagine, for example, a Solus being supported by the Yokais. That is ludicrously oppressive in terms of the amount of information coming out from those two in conjunction. So you may well see it coming through at least in one of these rounds in this second half. Volks just going to be taking out that drone, looking to push through, back in towards Tellers and Archives. Uh, happy that he's denied that utility, that information that's going to be coming in. Five drones down already, actually. Uh, Team Liquid doing pretty good there on the drone game, but KZ looking to push in aggressively. Palu forced to drop away, and it just says, you know, everything. You've got the echo there for the late round, but otherwise the Solace, the Mozzie, it is all about trying to delay that top floor push, trying to stop W7M being able to get into the map and get comfortable. And Twitch on the march once again. Main thing to note here, of course, is there is no mirror on the other side. Back, I'll tell you what, they see everything. Get out of here, the red pings are on you. That's just time to run, they're trying to scream. And so they will drop away one by one, but not before Paolo, Paolo has domed one and got out of dodge. He's chasing for the kill and being contested on the reverse. KZ takes a little bit of chip damage but keeps his life, as do all the members of Liquid. Great exit back to site for Team Liquid. Yeah, that's pretty good from them. They've got themselves a minute and a half wasted. They're able to start, uh, you know, thinking about site now. They can take up their angles. They can think about where this push is likely to come from. We've even got a little bit of remodeling going on. Reset's taking the opportunity just to create that rotation. And those can be smart plays because the attackers will have drawn out sight. They'll have an idea, and in the attacker's mind, they might be thinking they don't have a rotation through to Vault, and now things have changed. It's always shifting. It's one of the beauties of Siege. KZ is going to send in the Gemini decoy. Not going to find too much information there. I think was more interested about what utility was waiting for them mm. in that plant spot. What's interesting is there are no C4s in the back pocket of Liquid here. No He's Goyo on side, just really looking towards the three smoke canisters of resets for a little bit of denial. Of course, assisted by the Echo Yokai drones. But will that be enough? I mean, the answer is it's building up to be enough as we get towards these last 30 seconds. You can chunk through a good few with the smoke, the first canister coming out here. It does give a very narrow window that W7M can play inside of, but Philippox is looking for the backstab. The barbed wire may just give him away, and you can see why Paolo has opted for the barbed wire over the C4 in this instance. But it's whether or not they can get away with this execute. 
Four versus four, 25 seconds left to go. It's time for W7M to start moving and move behind that Nade. They will. Nade is thinking about getting dropped down. Manages to find one before he does. Three versus three. There we go. They move on into sight. Kill is found by JV92. They can start putting yeah, the diffuser down. Nade is on the cover. One versus two. As you say, this could be ended by Lagonis, but at the minute, Volks is providing that information. Loses the fight on the hatch. The plant will be stuck. It's a one versus one, effectively, as Nade goes down along the way it's all up to Lagonis versus JV92 Lagonis finishes off the one takes away the information can he get his other man on his feet it could be a play Des he's trying to force the one versus one here and for a second I thought he might see JV full sprint towards the hatch but Liquid they've got a bit of time to play with here they get the res it's a two versus one once more but they've got to be able to find a player one found straight away and JV this time round taking the clutch wagon away from Philippox. It's infuriating how many clutches are coming out. Liquid must be in absolute despair at this point. It must be very difficult for them to play again. <laughs> and I love how JB's like, yeah, come on then, we're listening. <laughs> Responses are all in the favour of Team Liquid, pretty much. But it must be very difficult for Liquid, like you say. They keep getting themselves into these positions there's where they're almost winning the round. Yeah. And they just can't get it done at the end. JV92 there, just playing that absolutely beautifully. Keeps himself tucked nice and tight in. You know, you think about that situation in your own games at home. How do you work it? What do you do? And it is just about finding the best angle that you can, the most cover that you can, the best security. And JV92 did exactly that. So Team Liquid, they're going to change things up. Head up to the top floor. It's going to be CEO W7M on the attack. Take the first round. And that, for me is a little bit of a worrying sign for Liquid. 10 seconds to insertion. May well build that way. I mean, we saw the almost comeback denied on the previous one. It was Liquid who started ahead on here. So again, it's so difficult to call which Attack way this may go. Looked on the attack inside this time around. We did see the one Oster attack come out of Liquid back in the first half. And I imagine we're going to see a similar intent coming out of the side of W7M. You've got the Ossa looking maybe to push inside a square. At the minute, though, has spawned out towards ATM. So it's more of a west side push. But I think you might see him go towards square, get on the windows, for example, look to work his way up from there. Meanwhile, on the other side of things, it's Nay trying to be a little bit cheeky coming up through sewer here. He may well be able to bite someone in the backside. Certainly could do. He's moving quite quickly, only 30 seconds into the round. And again, if Liquid... This is, this is, this is one of my concerns. If Liquid aren't on top of these little players that with a little bit of confidence W7M might start looking for, it could turn around very quickly and they find themselves facing Matt Point. The real stinger as well as to the KB on side. So when Nade starts feeling like he's getting in towards dangerous territory, you hit them digits on the phone, Everyone else just starts ringing on the side of Team Liquid, and before you know it, Nate can either find a freebie or knows that ground is clear to move through. Being quite conservative with it so far, so looking instead to get a little bit of visibility towards the site itself. It's bolts to fall early on the Solus. It's, it's going to be first the cool. opener for JV92, as you say. That is going to signal a little bit of a push through. Herds looking to get pushed up to the top of Square. What a, what a kill! Absolute beauty, knowing that Nesk was going down there, ready like a book desk. Absolutely did. And the thing is, you see those kind of kills, you think, wow, they just knew. Sometimes players can watch angles like that for 60 seconds and see absolutely nothing. Other times they're rewarded straight away. Plan's going down and it's been completed, Tim. This is going to be panic stations for the side of Liquid. They're getting in and trying to sit the defuse. There's a cylinder two versus three and they might just get away with this. Will they get there in time? He's holding it all the way through. And Liquid, they stick the disable and take the round. Wow, Palu showing some real nerve and experience there to stay. Step in, disable that diffuser and just say, you know what, I'm sticking this. Time out for Liquid. Even winning that round, they knew that it came down to being a little bit ropey. Letting them in with the plants. Time for a bit of a breather. <laughs> I'm not sure he ever will, I'm afraid. Still. Good, a good execute from W7M, and I honestly it thought, was. despite it being a three versus two, such that, an important round for Liquid to win that one. Yeah, I mean, I honestly thought that we said him would win it as well. They'd have someone on window, for example, or have some angle below, but didn't quite have enough prep, I feel, for that plant to go down. It was more of a, right, we're in, we can get a plant down, let's get away with it. And I agree with you, really good composure being shown by Paolo there to get in and show the pros don't fake. Do you think this is... 
This is one of the problems sometimes with playing, uh, you know, in an opportunistic way like that. You see the opportunity on site. I think we can get this diffuser down, guys. Right, let's go for it. But like you said, as maybe just not quite prepared, didn't have the foundation there to be able to watch that afterwards, to be able to prevent them. And that's experience coming through from Paulo to say, you know what? Yes, they've got the diffuser down, but there's no way they're in position to be able to cover this. So I'm just going for it. I think because the left side double CEO wall was fully reinforced off, they knew that the only real threat could come to that from either inside a site, which is what Liquid had control of, or from the windows. And if they knew that windows were clear at that point because the Osha was already repelled in to get the plant down, who's left to stop them? Again, you either need to be in below, you need to have that wall opened up to give a long angle on towards square, or be inside of sites itself, and that just simply wasn't an option. So a very good read in the moment coming out of Liquid, I feel, that has rewarded them with all things being pulled square. But the V7M are back again. They've got the Osa here on side once more, and the Ying is now joining the party too. Going to be open area as Team Liquid look to take advantage of the defensive side, get themselves another one. Liquid, I feel like, could do with just sort of running away with this map now, really, from their position, get it done, and get themselves onto the third map, which is Chalet in W7M's choice. And it just really sends that message to them. They don't want this to be too close. They don't want it to be going to overtime, for example. W7M will feel far too confident on the back of that, given that it is Liquid's map choice. Now, W7M droning out that main lobby extensively, looking to potentially move in. I don't know if they'll head up the spiral stairs or not, looking to get that top floor control as well, or whether maybe they just try to sweep through into Tellers and Archives from that position. Really? Drone work coming in through Square. No Solus on the other side this time that may have got a read on this. I spoke earlier on about Solus obviously being a fantastic drone hunter. But it's also the information that knowing where these drones come from provides you. You see two or three coming through square. You know full well there's about to be two or three players pushing in through square. And that is where the start of the attack will come from. Still looking in towards the pulse and the echo is the main intel providers in this round for the side of Liquid. Didn't unfortunately see those Jokai's being all that useful last time round when it came round to the fine, the dying 10, 15 seconds. The pulse though could make a difference with that C4 in back pocket. Certainly could do. Nesk at the minute managing to just... Uh, not find anybody above. Uh, he hasn't picked up any of the, those heartbeat sensors yet. He knows they're up there because the sledge is opening the floor up. So it is going to be a battle that may come slightly later in the round, Casey. I think aware of that presence underneath, just being particularly cautious, playing as much as he can on top of the hard surface inside of the corridor, opening walls up to allow floors on the inside to be opened up. Um, but happy for the time being that he's safe there. That's going to be uh, potentially important in the late round, the Yorkai just being spotted out and taken down. I think they're so terrified of the potential C4s coming up as well. <laughs> up on the desks, expecting it, but so far not happening. And there it is, that C4 coming out. They still have one more in back pocket for Parley to make use of. No doubt supported by Nesk, bringing calls over from that cardiac sensor. Does he really consider hopping in window here and just charging in? It's always a risk because of the floor to the right-hand side or the wall that's been slightly opened up. You can be spotted without any ability to challenge back, but just put you in a really powerful position to net a kill or two. Certainly would do, Paolo, very busy watching the verticals. He knows exactly where the man is, but somehow doesn't pick up the kill case. He gets away with it, annoyed that Paolo's looking up at the ceiling. He takes the opportunity need to drop and manages to find one. JV92 doubles down, and W7M are taking control of site here, Des. They're going to start to throw that diffuser down. Nesk comes on the flank, manages to get one, can't stop the plant. One versus three, cut down by Herds, and that's going to be W7M taking the lead again. That W7 then bounce back, Tim. <laughs> just, they, they feel unstable. Copenhagen, do you agree? I'm going to say no, Tim, based on that reaction. But so far, they are proving it. They won first map, they're up five and four. Strong second half so far, and again, it comes back to what I always touch on. You just don't know what you're going to get until you get into that second half. But it does feel like W7 have kind of awakened here. A couple more rounds, and that's them 2-0 up, and this could end up being a pretty fast Sunday. Yeah, absolutely. Herds knowing exactly there where Nesk was pushing from towards the end of the round. Um, it, it, 
as I said at the beginning of the game, uh, you know, we've got to remember SI 2021. Uh, Liquid were effectively 2-0 down on the scoreboard, at least. They'd only lost one map. There was a map advantage that day under the, the 2021 format. But against NIP, Liquid were two maps down and they were able to, to run it back in and get themselves into a map five. It is something that is certainly in their locker. Uh, you know, even with those roster changes, you look at a player like Lagonistas, let's not forget Mexico. When oh, wow. on Team One, they were all but out. They had to finish on a specific scoreline against Cyclops to have a complete repeat of the match, a replay, which they did, and they were able to, they were hanging on by a thread in the tournament and went on to win it. So they've certainly got the pedigree there of being able to pull those results back out of difficult Setting circumstances. Up. But you just feel like it's not so much about Liquid as it is W7M if they get on to 2-0. They've just been absolutely clinical and ruthless so far this event, and I'm not sure that they'll be reeled back in. Lagone is just poking his head around Garage here. In fact, there's two players down there, I think, now committing to a two versus one, expecting a push to come in through Garage. But W7M have sent absolutely no one down that way so far. They're much more focused on being out towards this east side. KZ leading the charge in through Square. Hoping to get a little bit lucky on a push up here, not knowing that one has just dropped away in front of him. I love how he aimed at that drone then, by the way, instinctively. He yep. <laughs> was ready to clear it out. It's so easy to do. It's oh, it so is. It's so easy to do. Volks is going to drop down the elevator, but cut off by KZ, who picks him up trying to move across. He knows that there was a second there playing around beepers, but he's not going to push that too much. Get back up to the top of Marble Stairs. Out comes the drone. And again, it's something that W7M have done very well so far. They like to gain that information and go in knowing what's in front of them, but resets. He knows what's in front of him as he takes down JV92 with a headshot. Levels things up four versus four. But Hurd, he's on the chase here. He's looking ah, for the man. He missed No his way! Shot, but somehow, Nesk manages to escape down the hatch. He best go buy a lottery ticket, Tim. You don't get that look every single day to survive that full spray coming out from Hurd. So you just whiffed a couple of critical shots. A real stinger. Now you're going to see W7M getting set up for this execute that we've seen so many times the push in through the hatches. And that real question now starts to come onto the side of Liquid of where does this push actually come from? Gonna get the server hatch open up, the lobby one opened up as well. And that really is gonna be the summary of these pushes. That's it, that's the attack largely done there. And did we see the um open hatches get opened up or did JV die before then? Okay, once okay, both are open. Both Fine. are open. Okay, that's the good. attack the attack at this point, W7M have done everything almost that they need to. They've left the elevator hatch, which would suggest attack that at this point the that they're just not gonna be using it. And they need to think about getting some kills on site and gaining access into that oh. plant spot. But the nice. only kills on site are gonna be Lagonis on oh, this angle, picks up one inside a garage and what a day he's having today two beautiful kills here in round 10 and that puts liquid in a commanding lead four versus one now effectively as oh, nade oh. will find himself down but not out for leapox the clutch master but he's going to need something extra special with 20 seconds to go he's got i was about to say he's got to kill four and the diffuser is on the hatch so even if he had diffuser there it's a lot to have to achieve but it's all but a possible when you look at it any other way timeout now coming in for w7m Things will pull all square at 5-5 five, five. once again. These games are staying pretty tight, Tim, and I can't help but think back to what happened in Berlin. 68 of 75 rounds, every map going either to 7-5 or through to overtime. This one feels like it's starting to get pretty close to that sort of scoreline. It does feel very similar. It does feel very I need to go back and check exactly what the scores were, to be fair. I think, from memory, I think three of the rounds went to, to overtime, as you, three of the maps went to overtime, as you say. Um, I think one of them might have finished in... One was an 8-6, yeah, yeah. one finished in 8-6. Um, right, we see the highlights coming through from round 10, then, as Liquid managed to level things up once again. Next round is an important one. Whoever gets it has the opportunity to get the map done in regulation time, avoid the overtime that Des is sort of willing into existence at this point. We've had very little overtime. Feed it to me, to Tim. Be fair, we've had very little overtime. I, I don't think I've even had opportunity to say the line. No. Say the line, say the line. So it was, it was 8 7, 7 4, 8 7, 7 5, 8 7. Yeah, it's three games all. So, really, what let things down was the 7 4 and 7 5 for it to not go any further. Yeah. Insane. As you say, I think this one is uh, far from done. There's a lot of siege to be played yet today. Uh, we're going to play another round right now, round 11, and it is going to be two defences left for Team Liquid, but two that need to be successful if they don't want to go to overtime here on bank, which I'm sure they won't. It could be a really dangerous prospect for them. As I say, from two maps up, you do get the feeling that maybe W7M will be able to close it out from there. It's going to be open area this time for Team Liquid. We saw this back 
back in around nine. It was a W7M win. So Liquid rolling the dice here a little bit, Des. They are going to have to get this one done. They can't go back to CEO. So it was a choice of tellers or open area. They've gone for open. I love how we've seen like a pretty interesting comp coming from W7M here. It feels like quite a slow one. No, like, heavily designated entry. You know, we used to see things like the Yana coming out. That's your, your go-to bread and butter pusher, it feels, these days. But instead here, you've got, like, the Flores on side who goes very slow. The Osser generally is quite slow. Philippe Park's playing on the Capital, more focused on the utility. So really looking towards KZ or JB92 to be the entries. And we do see some entry players bring out things like the Ace because the AK-12 is such a good gun and brings so much to the team. But it's definitely a little bit unconventional as far as competitions go. Philippe Hawks, once again, we've seen this push uh, from W7M just getting the Capitao in towards main lobby and looking to get aggressive and take that area. Potentially, as I said, looking to move either up the spiral stairs or into Tellers and Archives. For so the time being, the work has been done by the Ace. Selma Charger's detonating, going to provide views all the way down the long corridor on the top floor, but also as well into the Beepers area, the marble staircase. It just prevents a lot of rotations being safely made by Liquid. Relentless droning coming out from W7M once again. Three drones just racing across the top floor on the ground floor. See exactly what it is that's happening, and two players rotating their way through the basement here. I like it when we see this kind of play coming together too, when you have the Solus joined by someone else. Either to look for the two versus one, or just to kind of reverse entry. Oh, there are two drones coming in here. That must mean the player is about to follow. Point your gun that way, and we'll hope for the best. So it was both the Thorn and the Solus working together there. Bolts and resets stacking up as a pairing. Others largely holding around site with C4 still in back pocket. Three of them to use here, Tim. And that could be three dead W7M players. I was just able to see what's going on through that window using the mirror window that was in between him and that location. Keeps the nitro for the time being. And oh, reset. Reset steps up and gets a huge double at the top of the square skylight. Lagonis, he's in position to assist Paulo as well. You feel like Liquid have got this site locked down at this point. And for all the vertical control that W7M might have, it's just really not paying dividends at the minute. Not still bleeding at resets is on an absolute tear. Get the man some ice. Found three for himself, follow into a fourth. Liquid, it feels, might be about to pull us up to match point, which means things start to then get closer with that 1 1 scoreline that we mentioned. But Tim, we get away from the air quotes favorites of these maps and we start stepping in towards more precarious territory with Shelley being that first one. That's it, you look at those last three maps and you start looking at maps that either of these two teams can win. And you know, there will be a real effort and opportunity for both of them. KZ one versus five at the minute. The only thing he can really stop at this point is a flawless round. He will do that as he manages to take down resets, but it's that man Lagonis once again, really stepping up for his team in these two maps. Will close out the around and it is a map point opportunity for a team liquid i feel like a lead nesk as a personal hype man in my life just to follow you around and just scream shout and hype you up in general yeah i mean you could do anything like turn the kettle on and i feel yeah, like Dennis, you, were... you made a sandwich let's go exactly yeah or he loses marbles that you're turning the kettle on or something like that you locked your front door tonight well done you know that yeah, kind you of got thing. it you got it everyone needs a bit of nesk in their life so far, W7 them having it in a lot of theirs. Marching through a good few kills, but really it's feeling more and more like a team effort as this game goes by. Resets in that round with those three kills that he picked up, moved himself up to double digits. Parley was already there. Nesk is one off. Lagonis is one off. These are the kind of games that I love when it doesn't come down to one or two players just going nuclear and making massive hero plays, when it does become a genuine team effort to get a victory. I think ultimately you've got to look at this and say if Liquid, you know, aren't successful here, it really is not down to effort, is it? You know, they have, we can already see two maps in poured everything into this so far. Um, and I am interested to see as the game goes on, you know, how much of a, a factor fatigue might play. You know, when you're getting close rounds like this, close maps like this, and it's being hard fought all the way, you've got a lot of energy in the team, you've got that hype, it takes its toll, you know. What's, you've mentioned the Berlin Major already. I think that match ran to about five and a half hours. That is it was a, long a long time to be <laughs> up there at that sort of energy level for these players oh, yeah. and to be focused and to be concentrating. Um, you know, so that is another factor that could play into things the later this goes.
Uh, throats were knackered, the players were knackered. Everyone was just tired come the end of it. Even the crowd, I'm sure, were exhausted after a very emotional five and a half hours, as we mentioned as well. It took all the way up to the 15th round of map five to determine the overall winner. Screamer of a series that I'm sure many will never forget, and this one could yet build to become a similar si uh, similar series. Focusing here and trying to get El Canto opened up. Now we are not the real Canto, I'm referring to the wall. That'd be a bit gruesome if you're on about the real Canto. But with that being opened up, it means the player that plays on the window can see all the way down through White Corridor, and it makes it very restrictive for the defenders to be able to move around on this top floor. They're going for it once again here, but the electrification is back online. I think they've messed it up, Tim. I think they have. Um, I'm not sure if the first one was clear. Fine again. Um, it's, I think it was. They're going to have the EMP go. Yep, they're just impact nah, tricking it. it. They've gone a little bit lower this time, so they will get the job done. Volks, though, has wasted half of the round there, Des, Fireball. and a lot of utility in keeping that wall closed. Great fireball, but Volks is still Not good in. enough. It's so close, though. Okay, no, just stay, just stay, just stay. I think you're okay. Because elsewhere, it's KZ to fall first. That that should already done his duty in this round. All the MPs have been burnt, so not a world ended to see him taken off the board. Do they know that Volts is still here? Is the real big question. Two quick kills coming in for W7M as Philippe Box on the Monty starts his march forward. Now they know. Now they know. Time to run. <laughs> yep, that's time to go. Philippe Ox needs to start grabbing some territory can't here the window. up at the top of the stairs. Um, but as you say, as soon as he steps out, they really know that they've got him stuck. But the thing is, he can play that position, Convolts, because they're also going to have to clear him. And Monty's really not the operator to be doing that. 45 seconds left to go. Herd's pressuring from the window. Nade's got the diffuser in hand. He's thinking now about potentially getting into sight to put that plant down. Ooh. The opportunity is here to, to do it here and now, otherwise overtime is guaranteed. It does feel like the orange wave of W7M are marching on forwards, but Nesk, sharp as ever, finds one. Manages to escape going over the top rail there, down into the square skylight area. Nade, no option but to push in. Oh, right, finds the beauty through into Janitor. There's an opportunity for him to put the diffuser down here. He's got the support of the Monte. Could potentially take still here? action there from one side. He's going to bring those bullets in like a magnet. Volt has not been held. It was close, but he managed to Nest. get across. Diffuser will be planted. 2v2, trying to play onto the Monte. This is not going to be easy. He's got Volks in support, but he they have him. to work and deal with this shield. But the no! top of that, they've One got more. 92 He's in the corner. They've really got to bully him out here, but no! Nesk has been down! No! Liquid so close, but W7M, they hold on and bring it back. Overtime abounds him. We are going to overtime. There's 6-6 six, six on the scoreboard. <laughs> 7M. These are getting creative. I'm enjoying this. I, I, I love the, uh, you know, the educational sort of scientific element that's coming into them. You know, we oh, incorrect about... science about solids earlier. Well, yeah, a little bit, but at least you know we're sharpening up now. We're coming into evaporation. We've got that one right. What about condensation? Where else can you go with this? I'm sure they'll think of something. Vaporized. I'm sure they'll think of something. Many things. That is so unfortunate. I can't believe it. <laughs> I think even they looked a little bit surprised they managed to get that one over the line. But it does send us through to our first overtime of the series. Staff and open area is where Liquid are going to start out their defences. If we have a look at how that has gone previously for Team Liquid, they've lost it back in round nine, won it in round 11. So it's been a 50-50 site for them. They're going to be looking to get it locked down this time, of course. But uh, top floor is largely where it comes down to. They were able to hold on to it for a little while last time, but then ultimately, um, you know, kills came on a little bit of a flank. We had Lagonis working from underneath as well. Um, W7M really weren't able to, to make that vertical pay. So for me, if you're liquid, burn as much time as you can on the top floor and then give it up, ball back and force W7M to win the round. Only the two C4s in back pocket. Impact's already well burnt out here. Fortunately, there's no Osser on side. The attackers, again, going back towards what have been, for me, at least two crucial operators throughout, not just this map, but arguably the previous as well. It was banned away in the last one, so it didn't really get it seen, but throughout the tournament has been used a lot in the Dekebi and the Ying. Really running the field, it feels, so far across the Copenhagen Major. W7, I'm expecting a little bit of aggression from Liquid, but they're just not giving them anything, Tim, not taking the bait. 
No, not at all. Uh, Liquid won't do. You know, they know ultimately, I think, they'll have learnt the lesson from last round, which was they were able to hold on even after vertical control was lost, so they don't really need to sort of give anything away too much. Volps will be picked up there on the draw, and he knows it's up there with him somewhere. Will find it, so he knows he needs to move. But for the time being, he's wanting to hold on to this position. Needs to be careful, though. Ooh. The challenge comes in. He does manage to do some chip damage to Herds, but takes some himself, and he's going to be pushed from three directions here. Volps, unlikely to survive he's going to be shut down in ceo that's a meeting that he didn't want as herds manages to find that opening kill now unfortunate they're being pushed from two sides and was basically taking a gunfight on two fronts flicking between the two w7m basically playing with their food upon the top floor malusi obviously got moved to being a three speed a three speed a one speed recently after being a one speed for the longest time not really going to be able to get out of dodge there in any quick form or with any real silence about it either. It does give that top floor control over to the side of W7M, but they've only got 75 seconds left to play with, Tim. As I said last time around, it, they, they weren't really able to uh, make it pay. Having the top floor, they didn't really find many kills. They worked as many angles as they could, but Paolo and Lagonis were able to stay safely oh, inside of sight to the end of the round. That's an unusual one. Resets is going to pick up the kill with the Razor Bloom, and that is somebody just staying for too long in the wrong spot. Could have been trying to walk through a Banshee, could have been going through barbed wire, could have been anything. I'm sure we'll find out on the replay in a little bit, but... It's unfortunate to lose the two nades that were in back pocket as well as the Iana. JV92, absolutely nuclear so far. This map continues his own march forward. Palu just keeping himself deeper inside a site. He knows that there could be the potential for a hatch drop. He wants to be there, ready to spray it down should that happen. Nesk aware as well inside of the small office that he could be facing the same fortune. He's going to be holding on to that position. JV92's managed to walk in real close. Uh -oh. If Nesk's aware, oh! he's going to be <laughs> Top breach charge and JV92 will finish that kill, but 10 seconds left to go. They need to get moving here. Nick gets one, JV92 the other, and W7M in rapid fashion at the end of the round get three kills and close out the first of three overtime rounds. There was a stat I was looking at earlier that when it came to the series, there are only two players that aren't positive on KD. That's JV92 and resets. We saw resets pop off like mad early with that 3K in the earlier round and JV92 is currently on 16 kills, I believe. That pretty much neutralizes everything out and that both sides are, have f fully positive players in terms of KD throughout the whole competition. But Tim, oh, oh, come on, guys, <laughs> come on. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that one before. No, that's a new one. I love it. I don't I mean it. the skin. I mean opening an alpha pack. <laughs> On stream. On stream in the merger. That's impressive. The day the day someone does that and we get a black eyes coming out of it. Oh, imagine. Oh, the scene. Imagine. The, roof, the roof would be raised. Keep trying. Get some more packs on the go. Everyone in the crowd can just take it in turns, log into their account and see what's left. We need I, one of those people that saves them up. <laughs> Helby. Like a, yeah. Didn't um, he have like 800 packs? Helby's, I was going to say Helby, I'm sure, was at four figures at some point. Sure Honestly, it's really ludicrous. Then. All right then, round 14 could be the last. W7M on the defense of the basement. Liquid tasks with trying to heist or pull off a heist inside of the basement, inside of the vaults and walk away with the round win to force us all the way through to 15. Once again, no hard breacher on side, just three operators with hard breach gadgets in their back pocket. Last time around, uh, W7M on the defense were able to win two out of three times on this site, so certainly have their work cut out of them here, Liquid. They were only able to get one win, and they're struggling to keep a hold on operators like Nade, Herds, putting numbers up, but KZ and JV92 are the real deadly threats. 28 kills between the two of them. They are absolutely flying, and from Liquid's point of view, need to be targeted. It's kind of the battle because we mentioned in the semi-final yesterday that it was Nesk and Volts that were absolutely popping. Paolo in that interview just said, I didn't have to do anything wrong. My team are just nuts like these two. They carried us through, there's no problem. But this was also remarked throughout this series. You can't be the superhero every single map. It may well fluctuate throughout the course of the series. Here, we're gonna start seeing Liquid get set up for their execute, opening up these hatches, but needing an EMP to get one of them opened up at the very least. So waiting on Parley to get his way across, and here he is, breaching his way through the wall in towards open area and staff. Sure enough, open they shall. 
Opening the hatches at the one minute 30 mark. Not bad at all. Liquid should have plenty of time. I Even think. more. Just hanging around there. Yes, certainly does need another EMP to come in from Palu. If... Going to be waiting for a moment, though. Is I don't want to be cynical, but this is wasting a lot of time. It is wasting a lot of time. You could have had both of these hatches open at about the one minute 10 mark. Palu is now going to move in to do that. Just being but... cautious of potential cap cam traps, but he's going to support elevator before that open area. And this is taking Volk's now 30 for seconds. A long time. 30 seconds with Volks doing nothing. I don't want to be too cynical because they can still hit with this. It's not the end of the world. But like you say, that was a good 30, 40 seconds that Volks was stood around, not on drones, not really doing anything because he was waiting to get things opened up. But now that it's done, they can start thinking about the execute. 50 seconds still to pull this off. And I'm wondering if we're going to see, as commented earlier on, that Ying focusing on going in through lobby and everyone else trying to drop in through elevators. A bit of a bait inside of Orange there, making use of the first Candela. But Herds needs to be unseated. He will right, be there we go. He's going to be taken down by the near down, but not out. It's almost certainly going to be finished. Ness knows with the trail of blood that the man was down, goes down, finalizes the kill with a headshot. Five versus four now as Liquid begin the push on into sight. Resets is going to join Palu, but they didn't spot JV92. And he manages to take down Resets. Palu able to wheel around and fire the trade. It's three versus three. Ten seconds left to go. Advantage Liquid evened out once again. Two versus two. Lagornis is planting. It's all up to the cover of Vox. Oh, that's C4. That could be the one, but no, it misses the shotgun. It's going to find the down. W7M Bray Liquid Hearts once again as they take map number two. The absolute last fraction of time there for W7M to be able to prevent that plant going down. And somehow they managed to get it done and go 2 0 up. Unbelievable liquid. Gonna be scratching their heads. They've got to do three maps back to back to keep the dream alive. Let's go to a break, and when we come back, we've got Jesse on the big screen to break down some gameplay. I didn't see you there. Well, we find ourselves here once again, backstage at an esports event that's a bit in progress. I'm Emmy, duh, here to give you another tour of what it's like behind the scenes and what you can expect if you're visiting us here in Copenhagen. That way, please. Ian, what have you been paid for this? Now, the first thing you might be wondering is, well, what is all of this? Which means I take you over to maybe the scariest thing about esports, the talent green room. You might think, is esports a scary world? Esports! I'm scared. See? Hi, is this Hello. lights or sound? This is audio, sound. Audio? Yeah, yeah. We are calculating a lot of frequencies here. Hey, Andreas. Andreas, where are you going? What's your job? Hi, guys, what do you do? I'm uh, supporting this lovely woman. Hi. Um, the talent support, and I'm helping her be there on time, make sure everything is here. Easy job? Very easy. She's very easy to handle. Okay, thank you. There you go. I am here on the main stage. Fresh as Mike, his Milosh's, ready for him tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing would be for me to see right now is if I just did this. <laughs> what, are you, what are you gonna do now, huh? <laughs> We have the cup. Look at this in all its majesty glory. I don't think anyone is supposed to be up here. I think we're leaving a lot of footprints. You can find yourself here in our activation space alongside the helpful faces to play some of the older Rainbow Six titles. I think it's you. We've been sat here for two hours. <laughs> Come on, I'm so talented. 
The greatest minds of this game use this to just really bring an edge to everything that we do here on what is a marvelous production. That's the director of our show. I have never seen anybody more European director than our wonderful director. And I'm excited for him to see this. And that's everything that we have for you. We've got everything. So pull up a pew or a chair or wherever you are and enjoy everything that we have here in Copenhagen over this weekend of some of the best Rainbow Six there is. And that's a wrap. I got problems on problems on problems on problems on problems on problems I solve them. I run through the money, the pressure be calling. Left on my blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back. Tell me I'm garbage, I'm going through something, that's why I ain't calling. Phone in progression, it's all that I wanted. The phone in affection, I summon and dub it. Cause I got problems on problems on problems on problems on problems on problems I solve them. I run through the money, the pressure be calling. Left on my blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back. Tell me I'm garbage, I'm going through something, that's why I ain't calling. Phone in progression, it's all that I wanted. The phone in affection, I summon and dub it. Why you be all in my line about nothing why won't you go get you a dollar or something don't hang with it who line for nothing i see that we different you riding i double my don't do discussions on bragging about hundreds don't go to your places i know that they sunken don't call me your brother i barely could trust it i talked to a shorty she bagging the bucket and i'ma need all of my dollars on corporate so hand me the money i did read the pie i'ma give all of my people a portion to build them a fortune on flipping the ride i can't be mixy when iffy the vibe and 40 on 50 is really the time why is you all on my phone like you want me like you wasn't pushing the kid to the side i run through the money the pressure be calling left on my Blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back. Tell me I'm garbage. I'm going through something. That's why I ain't calling. W7M finish off Team Liquid, 8-6 on bank for map number two. It finished on a basement bombsite defense, but it started there as well. I wanted to show you round number three between these two great teams and the utility usage that we saw. I'm going to start by highlighting Nade down in the basement. Watch him putting up, look at the clock. Minute on the clock, he's going to be setting up this castle barricade very much late, but it's an adaptation to what Team Liquid are doing in this push. Let's see exactly what happens when we skip ahead a couple of moments, though, down into the basement. This is 30 seconds of the future. Castle barricade is on the locker's window, which we saw. And let's see where Liquid want to push in. They want to have one guy coming down through elevators. They want to have one guy dropping down gold. They want to have one guy Volps coming in through server, and they're going to have Paulu, the last man, dropping down the hatch to walk directly into lockers. Now, on the other side, W7M, they've got three answers these four pushes. They've got Vulcans to cover the guy in the bottom left. They've got more Vulcans to cover the guy in the top right. They're going to have Toxic Babes, a long throw from KZ to shut down the guy dropping inside of gold. But there's one position which unfortunately they're not able to cover with utility. Let's clean this up and let's see what happens when this all plays out. So notice where these players are coming. There's the drop from resets in the top left inside of gold. He's going to have a fight with JV92 pretty quick here. We're also got the player coming in bottom left and top right. Running through the fire is the player on the right. Oops, there's one going down. The Toxic Bay massive for the damage there. And now watch how these players are moving in the late round. What you've got is everybody congealing up going towards the south side of this bomb site. And if we pause it here, you'll see where the rest of this utility comes in clutch. First and foremost, one more smoke coming through from KZ. They're getting value out of every bit of utility. Of course, we see that coming on through from him, just using it there. And the last piece of utility not yet used throughout this round is the C4 in the pocket of JV92. He's gonna place that right on this wall, which will easily shut things down coming in from the defenders. Boom. And as we see, as we play this clip, 
The utility comes forward, chokes out one. The C4 comes through, finds Lagonis, and it's the utility to shut down this push. Even though Team Liquid had the numbers advantage, W7M using both Toxic Babes, C4s, and Vulcans really did turn this round around. It was an incredibly impressive one coming forward to put their first round on the board. That was 2-1 at the final score, 8-8. Eight, eight. We've got plenty more to break down, though. It's Milos, Alfama, and Fresh on the desk. Boys, explain the rest of this game to us. Thank you very much, Jesse. And yes, W7M fight forward and take it to overtime. Of course, it is not an Ace and Dez cast without another overtime. And here it is, W7M with a 2-0 lead with beautiful use of utility, as you saw on a knowledge station. Alphama, there's so much more to break down here. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's, it's actually crazy. Like the round that Jesse break down, it's like two guys grenades, one C4 used, three different kills. The utility usage on W7M is super good. They actually use the capital bolt all the way from basement to CEO on their CEO attack. They use the Kate Claw trick on basement. The variety of the stuff they use and how they use it really makes them a great utility team. And I think they've really stepped up their utility usage as well. You know, throughout this tournament where they felt that they could outgun teams, we've seen them just play to outgun teams. When they know Liquid is such a formidable opponent, they're trying to find that 1% edge. Like Jesse said, there was a castle barricade with 60 seconds to go that then funnels people in into utility. That's very good macro thinking and in terms of the strategy that they wanted to go for. I thought it was absolutely excellent, but we've also got to talk about their clutch factor as well. Yeah, it's like every single round had a clutch in one way or another in it. Mate, it's crazy. You know, 10 rounds, 10 rounds were played with less than three players alive. It's crazy on each team. Yep. Like the number of clutches on W7M staff. You know, Philip Box clutched four times yesterday. He only clutched again today. Ridiculous as well. Yeah. He gets the 1v2, uh, JV got a couple of clutches. And even it was, it's not even just the clutches that are the 1vxs, it's the 2v2s, the 3v3s. Yeah. Every round is coming down to these situations where you've got to manage it out. You see a 2v4 here for Liquid. And that's one thing that you'll always see in a grand final is both teams are genuinely going to be excellent. They've both got solid foundations, their utility is going to be good, their refrags are going to be good, and it's going to come down to these big moments. This bank was like an almost carbon copy repeat of when Liquid and W7M played each other in the phase two on this map, where but for Felipox clutching, that game would have gone to overtime as well. But there's something that has to be said about Team Liquid. A lot of rounds getting the early pick and then not being able to capitalize on it. It was actually one of those rounds, the one that Jesse illustrated in that situation. But also, even more, that so many of the rounds were left with such little time on the clock. Liquid had to act fast, and that was the moment for W7M. Yeah, and you gotta remember, it's not one of the best maps on Team Liquid. Like, Bank usually is one of their weakest maps. Mm -hmm. And yet, they come in and they're able to have great attacks, but they took too much time. Usually, that's one of the symptoms of a team that's just trying to play a map that they don't, they're not really comfortable on, and so they take more time doing the easy stuff. You gotta worry about this for map three then, Jack. I think you do gotta worry about this because it's Liquid and we've been here before. And, you know, unfortunately, this is the situation where Liquid have... They probably strategically won that round, right? Where is Liquid? Why, why am I seeing Fred <laughs> Anyway. <Fred. laughs> so, so you're gonna be brought in to replace everybody on Koi. That's Basically, yeah. All right, fair enough. Well, there you go. Map number three for this series, and we'll talk about here, is Chalet. That was a W7M pick. Now, both of our maps, Skyscraper and Bank, were very close, Jack. Mm -hmm. So how do we see things going on first? So Chalet is a curious one, because in my opinion, W7M are possibly the best Chalet team in the world. So if you're a Liquid fan, that's I, I, not I, particularly I... great news. Ah! However, the counter to that is that Liquid have been excellent on Chalet throughout this tournament. They have gone 7-0 against Revan, and then 7-1 yesterday. Like, they've been excellent. They've not lost a defensive round over two, but two maps played. And the way that they do that is that they actually ban differently. So they banned away Aruni and Wamai. So because they've got these different bans going on, that leaves what I call the, the Holy Trident up. It leads, leaves at least two prongs of that up that they then use to play the defense well on Chalet. And just like you said, right, it's one of the best maps for W7M. Same thing for Liquid. But I just think they played really differently. Like Team Liquid yesterday, to play well against Sonics, they, they were uh, against Face, sorry. They were trying to play super aggressive based off information. They played Bart the Solis, I think Valkyrie was banned, but they were played aggression, aggression, aggression. But if you rely all of your team play around aggression and winning gunfights, what happens if you find better opponents in you? KZ, JV, you know, some of the best fighters in the world are there. And if you look at WCNM, how they play the map, it's always based off utility, which is way more reliable than gunfights. All right, now the main question is, do we see a map four or not? Well, like I said, you know, 
utility-based teams, I, honestly, WCNM right now, they're the better in both areas, both in utility and both in clutching rounds. If they can keep the momentum, it's WCNM that takes it. I can't call W7M the best Chalet team in the world and then back against them getting it done on Chalet. Just can't do that, Milos. Copenhagen, are we going to see MF4? Yeah. See, Team Liquid are going to need more than that if you want them to pass through. But W7M, one more to go. Can we hear it again? Maybe, potentially, our final map. Liquid have to claw it up against W7M. And it's Chalet. Are you ready? Yeah. Well, the casters are. Let's toss it back to Ace and Dez. Enjoy. Tim, even the crowd don't Starting to like... sway a little bit, isn't it? They are, yeah. I mean, Des was saying, look, pressure especially is like, look, I can't call the best Shelly team in the board and then back against no. them. Even the crowd didn't sound sure. What do you think is going wrong here? Why are we not seeing Liquid get them out winning those first two? I don't think they've played as well as a team as we've seen them do previously. It was something Alphama mentioned on the desk there. You know, they were picking up a lot of information, using that information well, being aggressive behind it, being decisive. And I just don't think it's something that we've seen on the same scale from Liquid. But then again, you've got to remember they're playing against a team who are very familiar with them, play them plenty through, you know, normal regional play. And W7M just seem to be being able to control that. And there's been a lot of times where Liquid We'd get a good kill, but then W7M get two in return. That's and it, that's right. been a big problem. I can I can think of like a replay reel in my head of the number of times that we've seen Ness get droned in, step forward and just beam two players. And it's just like, wow, they can win this round. But W7M just don't know what giving up means, especially JV92, that last map. What a performance he had. Now, we are going into what many would look at as the home of W7M, Chalet, a strong map for them. And that is where you start to be a little bit nervous for Team Liquid. This could be... The exact opposite of a barn burner to me. It could be over and done in three. It could, and that's what they're playing for. The major championship here in Copenhagen for Blast R6. <laughs> Ying. Uh, they'll still cheer for the operator band. Oh, we'll cheer to the very last one. Ying is going to be our first before we head in towards the last attacker. W7M will take out Dokabe. So, again, reasonably sort of par for the course there. There's nothing too surprising on, shall we? Nah. And I like how across two of the three maps we've seen this band towards the KB. Now, I touched on it earlier on how so many teams, these two especially, have been leaning in towards a Lion to KB combo to suppress any kind of aggression. You know, you look back at teams like Scars, for example. Imagine trying to play into that. It's really difficult. But I do love two of the other bands that we've seen alongside that this map, the Ying. Both teams have ran that across the last two maps, so I think it's good to see a little bit of change. But then also the Solus ban. Again, both teams have made good use of that. Very good at drone hunting. Great as an initial roamer. Out on the map looking for the entry engagements after clearing away a few drones and denying information away from the attacking team. So a few things will change up here. We do get Azami coming back into the picture, so you may see her at some point. For now, though, that doesn't appear to be the case. The defensive side is instead rolling over towards Malusi, Capcan, Kaid, Mozzi, and that mirror, which suggests that you might see W7M change over to the Twitch again to help deal with that. I'd expect to see Vols potentially out in the map a little bit. We've spoken at length about this site and the way that the defense of it has evolved away from being a, a turtle strategy down on site. We tend to see ourselves now getting more out into the map, trying to hold top floor, mid floor before pushing back down. And I think that's probably going to be the case with Volks on the mozzie. He's got the pest. Uh, this is keep yeah. the drones away from him. Got this cap can. Have they spotted it? I don't think they did. So what's happened there during the prep phase is Lagonis has stayed hidden for about 30 seconds. He's just sat tucked in inside between the little barrels and shown nothing. He's sat on drones. He's been protected largely by uh, by the help coming out from vaults on the mozzie as well to deny away that information in the hope that we wouldn't see W7M go over to bring in a Thatcher. And truthfully, it was only with a few seconds to go that JB92 changed over and brought the Thatcher. Prior to that, they didn't have it in the lineup. So either they've seen him literally last second as he's stepped up to get rid reinforcing or what, I don't know. But it was a very much a last second change and they almost got away with it, Tim. Really smart stuff. So we did resets is going to be taking the challenge out onto the main garage door. There's not going to be any more pressure coming from there as we see uh, W7M just dipping away from that location. They've got the, the phantom pressure, they've opened it up and they're happy to just deal with that and move around, try to start pushing Ooh. rear. They're going to find an opening nade, KZ managing to take down Volks and that is a good start for W7M. Nesk, he needs to hold on here. He knows one's coming from the right, but he doesn't support his no team. Way. He no! does, however, get two in response, and that is going to bring us back to a three versus three. All that hard work by W7M in the early round, completely undone by Nesk. 
But as we said so many times, we've seen him get two, three kills in a round, and W7M still managed to find a way back into the game. So let's not count them out just yet. There's still a three, still a three versus two. Still plenty of chances to close things out, but I can't ignore those two C4s in the back pocket of Team Liquid, Tim. Exactly that. You've got to keep your eye on them. There are some destructible surfaces that it looks like W7M will be playing on to soon when they try to go for the hatch, try to push through lobby potentially. It could be that they get caught out by one of them, but it's going to have to be very precise from Team Liquid. Only two of them left inside of sight, and they may well choose to hold on to those explosives so later in the round to stop any potential plant attempts. Digging deep at this point and look to play behind that C4. It's such powerful and critical utility. It feels like W7M are getting things done here. They had a minute and a half still to play with, so they're certainly in no rush. Both hard breaches getting busy, making use of the breach in charges as well. Now just trying to identify exactly where these last two members are. There's one inside of blue, there's one tucked inside of wine. They'll have had that now, because you just heard there a second ago a couple of shots to destroy a drone inside of the other site. They know where these last two are, and that's what they're looking to try and make a push happen behind. And they've got an age of time, realistically, to do it. When they've gathered all that information, 40 seconds to go, but Lagonis with a very important kill. It's going to force Nade into a position of trying to put the diffuser down. Nesk looks to move in, gets one. It's an important one. Oh, oh get a second, though. It's all up to Lagonis. Diffuser is down on the ground, activated, so he's against the clock. 31 seconds, so it's not a major problem yet. He's going to take a tick of the diffuser just to see if he can bait Nade back in. Nade does not want to take this fight. Des being on such low health. No, they think that's the thing. I think if it comes to a straight up shootout, he likely loses this one against Lagonis. Here he comes. No! Lagonis not looking the right way. And Nade does win it out. He beams Nesk. He kills Lagonis. He gets the plant down. Does it all himself there? Is he going to be this map's hero for W7M? I think Lagonis was obviously very conscious of the, the hard left there towards game's door, but mm. whilst you're moving up those stairs, it's still a brick wall in front of you. There's nobody that can really challenge you from that direction. You know, there's only one way to have your gun pointed, essentially. I think we'll see it as the final highlight, potentially. That's going to be just after the diffuser goes down, but if you look there, he is very much positioned towards that brick wall coming up those stairs. And really, the only place the challenge can come from is towards the lobby. A real bugger, and it goes back to what we spoke about in the early rounds. I feel like I'm doing this a lot today, digging up things we've already spoken about, because it reinforces the point. But as we said, Ness can find two kills and beam people exactly as he did on Mezzanine, getting two kills, balancing back to a three versus three, but W7M just always find a way in those closing few kills to get the round done. In fact, a stat line I'd love to go and find out at some point. Maybe Fresh is interested in finding it out mid-series, I don't know. But digging into how many 3v3s potentially, W7M have then pulled over the finish line, or 3v2s or 2v3s, whatever it looks like. After the first few kills have happened, who comes out the winner? Because I would wager W7M have won throughout this series 90% of rounds that look like that. Bolt's just doing a little bit of renovation work, still opening up the angles from the top of Mezzanine. It's actually going to be a kitchen defence this time around, uh, so wanting to keep hold of top floor here, Team Liquid, and just giving themselves the angles and the opportunities that they might need to do so. We're going to have immediate attention up there from W7M, straight up onto the balcony on the bathroom side. Potentially going to be getting straight in there as the door, the window's actually opened up for KZ, but he needs to be careful because the army of Nesk is watching over that. Going to use a keeper barricade just to block off the potential entrance point, and Nesk wanting to lock into this area for as long as possible. It's a smart bit of bait play because the idea there on the spray coming from down below, the defensive side of Liquid would have seen the bullets coming from down low and just thought, oh, okay, someone's outside and down. Maybe we can peek this window and try and find the guy who's about to no doubt head up the ladder. So Casey was kind of there to capitalize on that. It was like the counter bait coming through. Through, but this army does not bite Nesk a little bit too wise to the antics of W7M, clearly. It's just again offering rotation options. Going to open this up, but we'll be able to move around and get to the office door, for example, uh, just preventing the flank coming through the rotation that's been opened by himself. But needs to be careful because bullets have been sprayed through that soft wall. So obviously a bit of information for Liquid there, just telling him exactly where the push is coming from from W7M. They are aware of it. We see the breach onto site opened up there in the picture in picture as well. So that just gives us an idea of what's going on below and the stage that <laughs> W7M are up to. They put a keeper barrier down on that little hole that he shot out as well so they can keep on playing inside of office because realistically office is the ground that team liquid need they need to be able to deny the vertical on towards site below they find one for themselves into a second they've got the control they need 
Now, Nade and JV92 kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. They can't push on forward because of the vertical. Nade does win that vertical strike back, and at least gives them a small chance here. But, Tim, I feel the numbers are just too heavily in favor of Liquid. You really would think so, especially with vertical control. But JV92 manages Surely to take not. down Palu. Is there an opportunity, you ask, for Nade to get inside a site here? Potentially start using some of those shields just to provide a bit of cover. Think about getting a plant down. 40 seconds left to go. It is something that's going to have to be thought about at some point. JB92 seeing another, but can't quite find the angle. If they've got that killer made it a two versus two, this would have been absolutely ludicrous. But either way, they've got to try and make something happen here. They've got to get a kill. They've got to make a play together. Leaving it down to the last 20 seconds, a little bit ropey as Ness finds one more. This feels like it should be Liquid's round here. And there it is. As reset swings out, Liquid on the board. Better from Liquid there, able to really dominate that top floor in the early to mid round. It's something that they've struggled with previously, I think, where they get one kill. And I said W7M are consistently able to get themselves back into the round. That time Liquid didn't let them. And that's what Liquid need more of. Go in, get that opening kill, follow it up with another and another. Be ruthless, keep that advantage. And one apiece. Feels like it's barely setting any of the pace for this game just yet. It's in two very different rounds. One where Liquid could hold the line and keep W7M at bay, but we've seen them crumble so many times throughout the series. That style of play that I'm just a little bit nervous that it won't come quite as clear cut as maybe they would like. Bar and gaming where we head to for round number three. No frost on side is probably my most interesting observation about the round, Tim. Very used to seeing that brought along with a shield on side, but Liquid instead doubling down behind Mirror Windows and the Azami. They have got no shields on side. Feels like madness when you think about the site run. It does realistically. Bar and gaming, it will be. And again, as you say, the shields would usually be used for the top of blue stairs, for example, just outside a library door. Um, and also on mezzanine as well. They've got the mirror window there, so it's as if they are planning on playing those positions. But I think the thing to watch out for at home, you know, that you can keep a track on in this round is how easily is library cleared. Do Liquid lose players up at the top of there? That is just a mirror window given away far too easily to a Twitch draw. Yeah. Again, it just feels so oppressive, the Twitch coming up against the mirror. Unless you have ways of really well protecting these mirror windows or if they're dug deep inside of sight, it's just so difficult to keep them alive, as we've seen countless times throughout the competition. I think back to Eminem's game the other day and the double mirror window kill on Fountain, for example, on the player that got inside with the shock drone. Just a real death sentence for a mirror when you're up against a Twitch. Where will JV92 appear? That is the question. He's got himself into the basement. You know, he's going to work his way up a set of stairs somewhere, but the question is, which one will it be? If he tries to come up the library stairs, for example, and get himself in close to sight, it could be a real danger for the side of Team Liquid. I think he knows he's being hunted down in the basement. If he just holds on here, there could be a kill as this Timing. news. They've gone into blue corridor. It's surely going to be a freebie coming around the corner. No, they're aware. They're aware, but he gets one. Is he going to get the second? He knew the challenger was coming, but no. Lagonis is there for the trade, and that's better from Liquid. That's better teamwork. And better for Liquid as well. You've removed the capital with the smoke bolts and the fire bolts in exchange for the Malusi. As I touched on earlier on, a one speed who wants those banshees are deployed now in the field. Only real value she adds is a gun, but the capital would add so much more. So definitely a worthwhile kill coming out for the side of Liquid. Now trying to work their way through this top floor is the side of W7M, though. Drones in, Terror has been deployed earlier on. They've really tried to march their way through some of the utility clear that they need to. And now it's starting to think about that execute as we get towards the final 60 seconds of this round. Is he going to be sending the Rotero drone on in uh, to move Mira out of position there? KZ is able to pick up the kill on to reset. So that's him. beautiful teamwork coming in from W7M to create this space where Nade goes in and sticks the diffuser. I'm not sure Liquid were aware. If they were, they certainly weren't able to challenge Palu, managing to find KZ. Three versus three. 30 seconds left for Liquid to do something about this. Palu does have a little bit of a vertical advantage here. He can potentially yeah. offer a little bit of cover. Oh, what a double no. hurts, though, to close that out as Felipox picks up the last and W7M hold on to another attacking round. Very naughty making use of that barricade down low to seize the feet, sprays high, gets the head of both before they really have a chance to react. Again, a great closeout for W7M. Eminem will win the next major. <laughs>
they think they are growing. Uh, I said this yesterday. Well, they're like... getting, I mean, they're getting further every time. <laughs> you know, they're on the main stage this time. You know, um, <laughs> I was joking to Nello yesterday. I won't go into what it was about the conversation, but I joked that they'd never be able to win SI. And then before he looked like he was about to punch me, I said, but you are growing from major wow. to major. You're making it onto the stage. You're pressing further and further forward. Things are looking up for them, but that made that final might still be a bit of a way away. Seeing how scary teams like W7MR once to sat here as well. It's another one of those rounds that Liquid looks in a pretty good spot to be able to still be competitive, and then W7M just charge their way through. You, you look back at this, the whole tournament, and you see W7M playing like this and dominating the final as they are, and you look back to that first game that they played, and you just think it almost seemed inevitable, and it, it was that first game that changed so many people's minds about just exactly what to expect from W7M coming into this tournament, and the fact that actually, you know, those roster changes haven't taken their foot off the gas for a minute. They are still hyper-focused and extremely capable of winning one of these major international events, and right now they sit on the very brink of that. This time around, we have got the Frost on side. I mentioned it being missed out earlier on. It's, of course, an entirely different side, but still the use of the shields, very, very valuable. Just the one I'd imagine we're going to see pointed down from Pierre by Bim Piano down towards the south side. Lagonis ready to challenge out towards his balcony. It was KZ who was here earlier on. Looks to be the same once again. Paul is starting out on JB. There's two come flying in. They've got no idea that Reset is holding off on the stairs. I'm pretty sure he knows that one more is inside a trophy as well as Felipe Box. Tries to march his way in. Will find one. But I'm pretty sure he gets caught out by an impact there, Tim. He's going to be down by that, leaving him effectively now, or completely and utterly in a 1v4 as Paul who manages to pick up that final. Hill of the downed for Leapox. KZ going to be heading inside of Library then. Looking to see if he can improve this story of round four somewhat, but it's unlikely he's holding the tight angle. Sees what he thinks is a man through there, but doesn't pick up any damage onto the side of Liquid. And he's <laughs> going and he managed to take out... Yeah, he, he tickled bolts with that as well. He hits Very with tight it. angle. <laughs> the fact that he tickled bolts at all with some damage on that is just hilarious. It couldn't find him at any point prior. Ness with the closeout. Two and two, Tim. Things pulled all square once again. Liquid keeping pace at W7M at least this time around. Yeah, it is hard fought, but the thing that I'm focusing on here is this is a W7M map pick, and they have still got to move into the defensive half. We do often expect the attackers to have a reasonable time on Chalet, but still, if W7M oh. head into their comfort zone, it could be a problem. What have we got? Ticket. <laughs> I love it. Love to see it. <laughs> I'm looking forward to being able to grind some siege after the event, Tim. Oh, I always am. Every time I get out of an event, it's like it's a you week of yourself. solid ranked. <laughs> you fancy yourself the next pro, so you're like, I want to get back and play. That's what it is. You've seen all these strategies, you've seen all these tactics, and then you go and play, and it doesn't really pan out. <laughs> no. You see someone like, I don't know, Cyber or KZ or Nesk on the Yana, they're just like, Holding an angle about the crosshair, you're like, yeah, I can do that. And then you turn out your reaction times are probably 10 times slower than theirs. Yeah. You just can't quite deliver. 100%. <laughs> 100%. Round five, it will be then 2-2 at the minute. W7M Team Liquid, W7M, two maps to nil up in this best of five. And that's the concern for Team Liquid here, Des. It feels competitive within Shower, which it is, but... W7M have got to go on to the defence yet, so Liquid are going to have to take that teamwork to another level. We've seen it sort of improve a little bit so far here on Shally, um, but it's going to have to really ramp up if they want to take the second half of this. And every round that W7M gets just puts more and more pressure on Team Liquid as well, because it's, it's that one step closer to it being over again, to the dream ending again. That's it, and you should get a pull, back, uh, pull off a comeback here and start shaping things back up to your side. Trying to burn the clock here, I think. The charge is in. Going to have to force Lagonis away. Unchallenged entirely. Not even swung on the downstairs window. And he is out of dodge in one piece. Palu is not. 
Harley will be taken down as the opening kill. Managed to pick up the opening um, kill last time himself, but this time not going to oh, be yeah. so lucky. JB92 finding vaults on a rotate. Five versus three. Nesk once again fighting back. So many of these round fightbacks have started with Nesk, but they just cannot dislodge herds from on library stairs. Des, he gets one at the bottom, one at the top. Absolutely unstoppable right now. Lagorn is finished off in sight, and you just feel like W7M. They're picking up momentum, Des. They're like a boulder rolling downhill. Just picking them apart layer by layer as well. Two players being chased through the map there as well by the side of W7M and giving them no room or recourse to even pause and breathe. And then from there, you mentioned herds on library stairs, just deleting them lower and upper. No real contest. It feels like that was Liquid trying to scatter back towards site, play safely. And W7M just had everything in mind. They knew where they were going to be. They knew to hunt them down in the process. A very well-controlled round. Just seeing the defensive library stairs from Herds there. He did a wonderful job. And then Philippox able to close things out. Uh, W7M just very slowly growing round to round at the minute. Liquid, they need to level this one up, I think. Get it 3-3 at the half and at least send a message that W7M are going to have to fight if they want that title. It's going to be kitchen and dining this time around. We had a good top floor defense from Liquid last time. It was round two. They were able to win. Uh, Ness got a couple of kills up there on the top floor, but it's talismanic leadership in this game. Whilst it has been present, I feel there's a lot of the best moments for Liquid have fallen to either Lagonis or Nesk. It's just not been enough to, to drag everybody else into it in the way that they need. Completely agree with you, yeah. Now, coming into this round, we're going to see a very similar one I imagined to last time. That being the W7M want to get control of Mezzanine and open up the office double wall. The reason for that being is you don't want to get challenged from above. So you want to get this opened up, you want to get JV92 in place to get a couple of air jabs down and lock members of Team Liquid away from trying to pull off a flank. And then look to get the actual dining room wall open itself and then look for a plant inside a site making use of the flashes, of the intentional smokes on side, of which there are none, so no, they're not going to. But really, it all starts with that top floor control. However, Reset's already being challenged quite aggressively here on the north side. Birds on the ash working across that top floor. He needs to be careful because it is Ness that he's going to run into. Ness, again, as I said, is showing a great mastery of that piano position last time around. Herds just putting the brakes on a little bit. He's got the ground that he wanted to. The Rotero is going to open up that piano window, I think it was, that's just going to give Nesco a little bit more vulnerability. But he has keeper barricades to spare, so he's just going to fire one of those in there and make sure that he is still covered from that position. Half of the round burnt at the minute without the top floor even being nudged by W7M. KZ does keep on throwing these Roteros in towards Nesto, so he has to keep on rotating through these different Azami Kiba barriers to try and keep himself safe, although the looks of it, they've just said, yeah, you know what, we're not winning that battle of attrition. Let's just get out of the dodge, move back a little bit further north. The danger here, Tim, being they've conceded control of office, which is what you want to be retaining as the defenders. Otherwise, the vertical control is there for the attackers. And you as defenders can do nothing on site except pull back. He manages to get that breach open onto site. So that is plant spot acquired now. They will be able to potentially move in. But where is Ness going, Des? He's got himself down into the basement. There's an opportunity here for him to potentially push up those main stairs and really hurt any attempt to get in through that breach. Yeah. I think W7M have confidently got control of top floor either yet. And it's just looking a little bit like they might stall out here. 50 seconds left to go. And they maybe think they're in a position to just push well, on in. Herds does pick up Lagos. Gornis. Nade, he's aware of Ness now. That bullet shot is going to force the defender away. And W7M, their time might be now. I was going to say, realistically, for Nade, if he comes in through lobby, he's got a challenge on towards the lobby stairs, but also out towards lower library stairs. That's two angles that Team Liquid retook there to be able to contest him. That's why you've seen a full retake over towards the north side. He's going to start out in solar and look to work his way down the stairs for a direct push in towards kitchen. This could catch Liquid off guard if they aren't fully aware. And if they weren't aware, they certainly are now. Casey marches in for two. Nesk beams one, as we've seen him do all day long. Transfers onto another. It's a one versus two as JV, the only one still left on his feet here. Going to try and get his teammate up so they can try and hold this angle. But the backstab comes in. Liquid just a little bit too mobile for W7M. Liquid with their backs to the wall were able to get their foot on there and push back in a hard way. Des forced themselves out of a dangerous situation. Volps with a huge play at the top of West Main Stairs. Just able to really swing the momentum for Team Liquid. At least level things up 3-3 on the half.
Woo, another 3 3, Tim. We had that on the previous map. We did. At how least did, how did that map turn out? I know. It's at least a positive sign that Liquid have worn into things. We touched about that first map, 5 1 half, seemed invisible for those first six rounds. On Bank, things looked a little bit better. On Charlie here, they're looking okay as well. I think probably what, what stings a bit is you don't necessarily feel convinced that they can drag it back. Clearly, they've got the capability, and we know that. But you just don't know what you're going to get from them in the second half, right? It's the same story once again, where Nesk is popping and playing incredibly well, but the rest of the team around him, you know, Parlo especially is the name everyone's going to look at, not rising to the occasion alongside him. The thing is now, for Liquid, I don't know this, whether it's whether it's even about them. W7M have got such a lead now. You know, they, they are four rounds away from winning this whole thing, from winning yeah. the major title. There's... There's not really a huge effort that they have to make. Liquid have to force them to win this because otherwise W7M will win it by attrition. They'll just pick up a round here and there and eventually they'll get it done and over the line. So we need to see, like we did on that first map, another instance where Liquid come out and get two, three, four, five rounds back to back and really start putting W7M to the sword and putting some pressure on them. I completely agree. We'll see if that pressure comes out on the attacking half here of Chalet. I'll go back to my comments from Matt One. Two halves to a game of Siege. You may see a very different next few rounds or so from either team. Bolts is the one who's trying to be a little bit cheeky, hanging around the bottom side of Trench, looking up towards West Main. Maybe hoping there's a rotate to come through from a member of W7M through the basement. But as it stands, they're all skyward. They're all up on the top floor, not down here in the basement. Oh, this is cheeky. This could be an interesting play. Volks is ready to go here. Okay. You can see he's got to use the lip that's available into dining. He's going to go straight into sight. He doesn't Red have the in. fuser in hand, and he maybe not have a chance, but he does manage to find a kill. Nesk actually picking up both. It's going to be Volks taken down, and somehow yet again, Des, W7M are able to fight back. It's three versus one. How on earth did they turn that around? Lagonis, he manages to get one. He's going to have to come up clutch for Liquid once again. One versus three becomes one versus two becomes none at all as Herds is able to get that final kill for W7M and they are one round closer yet again despite the heroics from Nesk at the beginning of the round. I feel we could have said that to probably 50% of the rounds in this final so far, Tim. Yep. It must be heartbreaking, not just to be a fan, but a player of Liquid 2. I think we all stayed to hope to maybe see Nesk and Parla do it, my friend, but it feels like a bit of a... Bit of a stretch, maybe for Liquid this time round. They'll be denied yet again, waiting maybe even six years at this rate for that potential elusive second win at a competition. It's just again that we've seen Nesk pop, find a couple of kills. W7M slam back in response. There's always someone there ready to respond, Tim. This is it, and Volks got into to such a good position essentially quickly, and you felt that there wasn't really a chance for him because they saw him come up the hatch. The challenge was there immediately, but then Nesk was on the cover, got the kill, and gave Volks. He created space for Volks inside of sight. But then, on the long angle, W7M just had plan B, and they fall back into these plan Bs, plan Cs so quickly and smoothly that it makes it so difficult to keep on top of them. Really, really difficult. Here we go, though, with another defense. Different side this time round. Looking in towards the mirror for JV being matched, as we've seen throughout the series by the Twitch on the other side, with Volts bringing that one along. So quite a bit of success from Ness previously playing on this operator with the, the shock drones and moving away mirror windows. We'll see, of course, if Volts can have a similar amount of success on it, conscious of the window flank that has been shot out, rightly so, as there was a player sat inside of the bath. Start feeling as if it's now or never for Liquid as one round slips away. Oh, and the body, body block! Blocks. The body block comes in from the Azami, and that prevents that mirror window being opened up. And it's just another, another element to W7M's game that they're able to do the right thing at the right time. I want to give them all the credit that they are, Judes, because at the minute for me, they are looking like the complete siege team. Nade is going to be taken down, but not out as he tries to move away from that barricade. And that is at least an advantage for Liquid, but he's likely to be collected here as KZ will take the opportunity. Yeah, KZ the hero as well, because he's on the his army. He can block off the window and make it safe to be able to get his teammate back up. 
And things can resume. They find the response. JV specifically on towards Bulbs. That's the Twitch off the board. It's two smokes offline as well, which is a real stinger. Casey onto Lagonis. He's going for the next and finds Nesk as well. Casey will not be stopped this map, Tim. A flawless round here is on the cards. One versus five. There's only resets that can stop it. There's always the possibility of that clutch coming through, but you know that it's slim, and it will indeed be that flawless round for W7 Emdes. One step at a time. They are moving towards that trophy, towards the title of the winner of Blastar 6 Major Copenhagen. They do not seem concerned by the position they're in. We've seen them so close before, Des, but unable to clinch it out over the last year. But this time, just feels different. It's a real heartbreaker because I know the timeout's come in, I think, maybe... I want to say at the right time, but really you felt it building in the last round. They just look like they've beaten themselves, looking like mentally like checked out a little bit. Again, things can start strong, but they just don't have that composure or the, the sharpness to hold on in towards the very end of things. And I just feel like, again, they've probably already beaten themselves mentally here, saying, oh, well, there's two rounds to go. We're down two maps already. Like, how can we bring this one back? It's, it looks a little bit flat. Of course, the tactical timeout does help. Coach can step in, raise spirits once again, get the comms back online. Hopefully, Liquid can start bouncing back in. We don't want to see a 3-0 here, Tim. We want something a bit more competitive Absolutely. for a grand final, because these two teams both have been fantastic throughout the entire competition. They really have, and talking about fantastic throughout the competition, Des, I'll take a second to thank all of our audience members that have been here as well. I think they've, uh, it's not over yet. There's still plenty of Siege to enjoy, but you can give yourselves a cheer. You've been an absolutely fantastic part of the experience here in Copenhagen, um, and certainly played your part getting behind so many of these teams. And the chants are always appreciated as well. We've had some fun ones. We do love the chants. We have had some fun Admittedly, I think Tom Sherlock being the mastermind of a good few of those. I think he may be responsible. There you go. I think Proud he may be press. responsible. It may well be him. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he's still in his suit or not. I think he is. I think he is. Surely he is. Uh, we had no, to knowing him, I wouldn't be surprised if he just ripped everything off when he was done and that was that. Don't encourage him. We head towards round nine then. This could be the slippery slope for Team Liquid. W7M does. For me, the difference here between what we're seeing from W7M now and maybe at other tournaments and whether the roster changes have created this or not, there's, there's just there's another gear. It feels like there's just been another gear for them and they've saved it for the final. And they've come in here and they've just been absolutely single-minded and just so focused on getting this done and over the line, on finally winning that title. You do start to wonder, you know, what, what will be next to W7M if they win this? It's... It's an exciting thought. Well, it's in building, right? As we said before, they've in the last year alone, they've had four, uh, three top four finishes. They finished yep. second at SI. Yeah. It's, it's clearly been building up to this point. And what I love is that a year ago, being honest, I barely heard of most of the players on the team. And I was like, wow, who are these guys coming out winning three straight Brasileiro stages in a row? Well, this really appeared and took the world by storm. This is the thing. Back in 2020, W7M was still playing inside of the Brasileiro, but it was all about Furia, really. There was It was Furia and W7M that were sort of battling with each other to be like the next team that came through. And it was Furia who sort of came out. Oh, yeah. But W7M then, like you say, 2021, they hit their stride um, and haven't stopped since. They hit, like, they were like ninth, I think, at the end of 2021 in stage three. And it was like, yeah. oh, who are these guys? Next stage, oh, we finished first. And we're, we're we, going to we Charlotte lose, Major. We lose one map. We go seven, one, and one. They were absolutely unstoppable. It was terrifying. Yeah. Nesting, they get recovered here as well. So stays on side for now with those two nades still brought back into play. Interesting to see in resets as well. Moving over to play in the nook, but with the EMP grenades in back pocket, not the frags. No chance of Nade himself being brought back into play. He was picked up as the entry death there. The mute going. Not the end of the world. The jammers will be down. The utility will the be used. being silenced. The mute being silenced, indeed. You smooth, did. Uh, smooth. Thanks, mate. Resets wanting to move into main lobby. They are attacking onto basement here. It's going to be down in the garage, but just conscious. I like the setup. The dining wall's been partially opened, and it's making Liquid very nervous about getting themselves inside of main lobby. Everything just feels like it's squaring up here for a Liquid Execute. Again, I'm always nervous to get too excited, given how the last few have gone, but they are ready and waiting, just getting themselves in position on blue. We've got a couple watching on the breach, and there's resets. He was the one watching in through that main breach, a real kind of contender in towards sites itself. 
Heard still tucked in tight. KZ into a second. Looking almost for a third, but not quite able to collect. W7M inch closer and closer towards the championship point opportunity that they've been fighting for. Palu, he's trying to work his way down into blue. He knows it's a 2v4. The time is ticking down. He has to make Not a move. He hits it, but the trade is there. Time after time after time for W7M does. They take themselves onto six. They are told to keep themselves calm, keep the energy level, because they know what could be coming here on Shally. I don't want to call it a cast the curse, but again, it's still, even in a five versus four, with them getting set up for the execute, it's hard to get too excited, because we've seen so many come this way. I hope to God you didn't bet your house on a liquid win. <laughs> Need to I think after the history with Liquid, it's always yeah. a difficult, it's always a difficult <laughs> gamble on them in the final, isn't it? As I said so many times, you know, five top four finishes in the last five years, just not able to get it over the finish line since the middle of 2018, and that wait for Liquid fans painstakingly have waited for half a decade, and looks like they may have to keep on waiting. W7M. 3-0 so far on the defensive side. Could be taking us into what looks like our last round here at the Copenhagen Major. Going to be trying to hold on to library here, KZ. Just look at that. Two ADSs down. You know he's staying in that corner or somebody is. They're not going to be giving it up. Frostmats inside of the window. Laser gates on the double window as well. They are going to be holding on tight to library. Don't want to be letting it go. Don't want that vertical control given up. W7M here, they know what is in front of them. Are they going to be able to close this out here and now? Feels like it's building towards that for sure. But now we're going to see how Liquid set up once again. For me, I'm less concerned about the setup and much more about the execution when it comes down to it, though. For the most part, W7M have got all their players scattered either on or above the site itself. One, as you saw a second ago, KZ lurking off up towards Piano and Solar side, has slowly started to work his way back down to join the rest of his team. Hertz is the one they've got to worry about on Mez, liking the use of the Keeper Barriers here as well, both inside of Arbery and out on Mez itself, to make himself even more secure. We've seen a couple of varieties of things like mirror windows used out on Mez. Now you've seen the Keeper Barriers come through. We've seen shields used, so several strategies being rolled in here to constantly keep the attacking team asking questions on how they can break through these setups. Oh, they know he's in the corner. Certainly. This is always dangerous. The problem is, quite often, you will know that they are there, but how do you move them? How do you get that utility into the position it needs to be? You've got laser gates to fight through. You've got ADSs to battle with, and JV92 is going to be keeping himself in position for as long as possible. The laser gate has been disabled on the double window, mm. so there is an opportunity, potentially, for nades to come flooding in. Volts just holding an angle at the time being, trying to just get in there and do anything he's thinking thinking about top library stairs, but he can't really risk it until library's taken out. It's this three corners of the defense. There comes one kill and two. They managed to fight back with one clearing out library stairs. Two versus four now. Oh, that's all they've got to do is find these last two. It's all that stands between them and the silverware they have been chasing for so, so long. Parley rounds in, down he goes. It looks like there's one left standing. It's Volps against his old team. It could not be any more bittersweet. He'll step forward and see what he can find. They know exactly where he is, but this one feels like it might be about done and dusted, Tim. 50 seconds left on the clock, and they are just waiting, inviting him into the Viper's pit. He's just going to be trying to use any angles he can here, try and find himself a cheap kill, maybe a vertical. The camera's going to give his location away. He's coming down to 30 seconds, 30 finds one. Finds one. Can he find any more? And he's got to get an ace to be able to pull it all the way back. That's even more ludicrous for Lee Pox and Nade. Left standing. They see the longer angle. It's the one versus one of a century. Who wins it out here? Vaults down to a slither of HP as we enter the last 20 seconds. Doesn't He's got the diffuser in hand. He can move in. Des needs to find kills, though. I can't find it either. W7M, they've been denied. Siege Silverware three times. But here in Copenhagen, no one could stop their rampage. They are. Your Blast R6 Major Copenhagen Champions. What a performance it has been from W7M. Truly clinical, Des. At every turn, they have had the answer to Team Liquid, who played their part in this final, but were just unable to get things started. And you can see the pain on the side of the losers for the winning team, how much it means to W7M.
How many more times can Liquid Hearts be broken as well? You saw Nesk head in hand. It's a real stinger for them, but let's not take it away from W7M. They have worked hard this last year, winning every single stage and equally being denied every step of the way when it came round to events. But a new era of Siege is ushered in where W7M is that name that stands at the top. Not just yet, W7M, they give the trophy <laughs> a little pat on the way past, but go and respect the other team. Wishing them well, I'm sure, and they understand exactly the position that Liquid are in. They were there only themselves a few short months ago, Desert SI, having lost to G2, but they have returned stronger, better with those changes and able to finally take that title that they've been building a year towards. Again, Ness just looks a straw, bless his heart and soul. Again, how many times can you keep on saying Liquid are this close but just cannot quite get over the finish line? That day surely must come one day, but unfortunately it is not today. Let's throw down to the stage with Ian, who waits with your winners. There's and there's, thank you so much. Can you believe it? This team has been supremely confident throughout this entire process. And there is just one thing remaining left for them to do now. Gentlemen, this is your moment. Please stand in front of our trophy and get ready to raise it high in the air. A thoroughly deserved moment for them as they gather together every single last one of these incredible men. Are you ready? We got one more. They want to make sure the entire crew is in place. But what makes this so special is do not forget this team came second place in the World Championships and they turned it all around to bounce back. Ladies and gentlemen, your Blast R6 Major Copenhagen Champions, W7M! Extremely confident that this team, this roster, had what it takes to do exactly this. Raise the trophy in front of this crowd here at the Forum in Copenhagen. But I imagine you didn't expect to do it in three maps here in the Grand Final. No, I didn't. I was confident, but uh, it's unbelievable. I don't know what to say. It's unbelievable to, to win this championship. There was a real composure about your team throughout. Everybody seemed calm relaxed, you never seem truly in threat of losing this grand final. Was it, did it feel like that within the game? Was it a very calm, clear mentality? No, no, it was not. I, I was pretty anxious, but we were, we were saying round and round, round and round, round by round we were playing, so uh, we could close the, the game. Igor, come on here. We, we had a chat yesterday and listen, SI heartbreak. It must have been very difficult for you and your roster. You brought in these incredible new additions who slipped into this team perfectly. And now you managed to get it done. Do you feel like you turned that heartbreak into the ultimate love story here? These guys deserve it a lot because we work a lot every day and we are the best team of the world. These guys deserve it for sure. Casey. Come here, come here. 
Now, we've all had birthdays, we've all had amazing gifts on our birthday. Did you know it's KZ's birthday and he's just won a championship here in front of a live Siege audience? Happy birthday. How does it feel? I'm very, I'm very, I don't have words to say it's the best gift, gift that I can have. So, I'm very happy. Happy birthday! Do it. Hello? Bom, difícil, tá? Mas eu tenho um. Tenho um recado para mandar para três pessoas, quatro na verdade, muito importante na minha vida. Primeiro, agradecer minha mãe, não sei onde ela está, mas ela que fez eu jogar aqui com esses caras. É... O investimento valeu a pena, hein, dona Patrícia? Mandar um abraço para o meu irmão, que eu infelizmente não enfrentei ele na final, mas esse título também é para você. Mandar um abraço para meu pai e mandar um beijo para minha namorada, Amália, eu te amo. E é isso, o trabalho foi, foi feito. Thank you. Does anybody else want to say anything in Portuguese here? Come on. Do it. Alô, alô. Todo mundo escutando aí, tá de boa? Não entendi nada. É, mandar um beijo pra minha família, que tá lá em Floripa assistindo. Meus amigos. Eu tô muito emocionado aqui, acho que vou chorar. Vou chorar. Mas é isso. Ganhamos aí o Major, rapaziada. <laughs> Eu quero agradecer toda a minha família que está sempre acompanhando e apoiando. Amor, eu prometi que eu ia ganhar o mundo e hoje finalmente eu conquistei isso. E um recado, a Liquid merecia pra caramba, guys, só que pô, vocês estavam duvidando muito da gente. E a gente já provou isso aqui várias vezes. Mudou o IGL três vezes, mudou a Line duas vezes e nós está aqui, ó. Time mais constante, agora campeão do mundo. Vamos falar o que agora? Thank you very much, emotional proud and deserved of this trophy. A massive congratulations once again to our Blast R6 Major Copenhagen champions, W7M. They've said it themselves. They are arguably the best team in the world right now. They've definitely proven something major here this afternoon in Copenhagen. And it is time now to pick apart what was a very one-sided grand final here. Milos, Desk, Take it away, guys. Thank you very much, Ian. Copenhagen, our champions, W7M. What a tournament they have had. We all were questioning the squad, and look at us now. Fools, I tell you, Jesse. Fools indeed, Milos. My god, they made us look like fools, and they did it so well. 3-0 over Team Liquid. You can't say that Team Liquid didn't play a great event as well, yeah. of course. So good in the quarterfinals, so good in the semis. 7-5 and 8-6, those first two maps as well, very close. But undoubtedly right now, W7M, the best team in the world. We've been waiting a long time to say that. Man, I keep hearing the same sentence from Felipox at the beginning of this major phase one. He was like, oh, you know, we're just trying to evolve, evolve, evolve. <laughs> yeah, you just evolve into major champion, by the way. It's crazy. <laughs> it's a final form. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy when you think they made two roster changes. They came in with a new ITL, new vision. If, if Liquid had Nesk and Palu, they had Hurt and, and our, our uh, lovely uh, uh, teammate, KZ, KZ, you know, to, to bring on that firepower, bring on that experience, be the pillars of the team. And finally, they get that title. I spoke to Julia when he was on this roster back in Sweden at the back end of last year. And I said commiserations, you know, when they'd been knocked out. And he said, don't commiserate. These boys, this, the front three of this team is the best in the world. It's not a matter of if they will win things. It's a matter of when. They went on to the Six Invitational final. Another setback, but they learned from it. And they came through this. As soon as they pl started playing this tournament, as soon as we knew Philippe Ox and Nade had bedded themselves in, this roster has always looked dangerous and like potential winners. Even in the underpinnings, you mentioned it. Julio, the only person not crying in the team, is saying, you know what? They'll be fine. Yeah. They'll be fine. They just need to cry it out right now, but they'll come back to it stronger. We saw W7M at 6 Invitational. Yes, through changes now into our tournament, but here a Blast R6 Copenhagen. They make it work. Though, for those watching at home through Twitch chat or even here with us that have their phones on, if you'd like to ask any questions for us to answer, please drop them in. We'll go into sub-only mode at the moment. There you go. There's something extra for you if you want to ask questions, if you want to ask Fresh, how is it like to play with Pengu? It's all right. <laughs> he knows a thing or two about the game. Fair enough, fair enough. But now, 
our highlights will play through from our game. And I gotta say, that last map, it looked like Liquid were deflated. W7M just rolling on that very difficult to explain, really, momentum that we also mentioned. Certainly. I mean, this was a, a big map for them. I really think Liquid, if they wanted to come through and win this tournament, it felt like it needed to happen on bank. Map number two, so close for them, obviously. Overtime map for them. They come into their opponent's map pick for map number three, already 2-0 down in the series, and they gave it their best shot that first half. Not too bad at all. Liquid, their defenses certainly uh, put up three rounds there. Seemed all right, but I think it really was that momentum. It's unfortunate that Paulo, I think, maybe got in his own head a little bit here today. Didn't really uh, muster up to what we saw coming out from KZ, what we saw from Herds, just weren't winning a lot of gunfights. And sometimes, I mean, on the biggest stage, that's just what it comes down to. Yeah, and you said it best, right? Momentum was on the W7M side all the time. And even the liquid, the liquid rounds where they won strategically every single time, W7M brought it back. Thanks to star plays, thanks to clutches, thanks to fragging power. I just don't know how they get away with it, but they got rounds every single time. I've got to come back to that ban phase as well. I know it sent me and Jesse into a bit of a headspin as to <laughs> how we ended up on Skyscraper and Bank, but I think, you know, W's, I think the whole best of five kind of lynched around those first two maps. If Liquid got over the line, I think we was probably going all the way to five. Yeah. As it was, I think, you know, the Skyscraper particularly, Liquid needed to get over the line there, and then they threw away Bank. There's only so many times that you can just keep resetting and going again and going again without it showing up somewhere in terms of trust of the team, in terms of just motivation, in terms of confidence in each other and in yourselves. And I think we just saw Liquid run out of steam in map three once they knew that their best two chances had gone away. And I think, you know, in general, when you, you when you think of Team Liquid playing these finals, it must have so much pressure. Like, you keep losing these finals again and again and again. Every time you come into a final, mentally, you're going to be affected by that. Way more than W7M coming to this one. They said it. Pressure is on them, not us. Yeah. And it showed. Uh, we've just seen it again, you know, obviously, the Liquid boys in, in, in Floods of Tears, because it's another final. And to be honest, another great opportunity to, you, you know, to get over the line that they've passed up. I, you just saw in the highlights there, though, but as soon as W7M were done lifting the trophy, they all went over and consolidated. And that is, you know, we see that from the Brazilian players in particular. They have this big brotherhood. And as much as they want to celebrate the win, they also want to commiserate their opponents that have lost. A lot of love in Brazil, and unfortunately for Team Liquid, not going to finish it out today. I think you've really got to look at the growth from W7M as well here. This is their fifth at big tournament they've been to. They went to every major in SI last year. Throughout those five tournaments that they've been to now, including this one, they've only gotten better. First, they got out in groups, then they got quarterfinals, quarterfinals, then they finally made it to, or semifinals, semifinals, I should say. They finally made it to the grand finals at SI, couldn't lock down the win. Now, finally, today, they get that win. They've never downgraded. They've never, you know, fallen off in terms of their placement in a major. So, following that uh, stretch, maybe we'll just see W7M continue to win things from here on out.